I feel like we should have more room technology or some shit. You know what I'm saying? I think shit is like flying up from the ocean to the sky. It's like uh, surfing and some oil spillage inhaled like a whole bag of goose feathers. I worry primarily about whether there are nightclubs in heaven. been recording this all along you have to patent it before this episode goes live or somebody else is going to beat you to it flamethrowers wow thanks a lot elon musk <laughs> you guys you guys know that he he built like cheap affordable compact flamethrowers right that's that's like a thing that elon musk did yeah the nickname for it was not a fl- flamethrower for legal reasons so he just, he just you can just call something not a flamethrower, even if it's a flamethrower? Yeah. Are, are the people at the patent office fucking Dadaists or something? What the fuck? <laughs> Hi, welcome back to podcast. <laughs> oh, I missed this. <laughs> we are back. The boys are back in town, literally. Yeah. Oh, wow. And a new boy. A new boy! We got a new boy! Quiet Nick. Quiet Nick. <laughs> comma. Quiet, comma, Nick. <laughs> I, I saw in, in the videos that uh, on the podcast you have to get closer to the mic to to talk. Yeah, closer. The that, 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 there's like an ongoing theme of people talking kind of off it, and the uh, person <laughs> hosting the podcast like moving the mic closer to their face. Yeah, that happens a lot on this it's podcast. A, it's like they're actively trying to move their face away from. It and <laughs> just yeah. Keep trying to. It's like, oh, he's moving the microphone closer. I'd better be. I better remain, remain equidistant to the microphone at all times i don't know why he's trying to move it closer to my face but i'll just move my face farther away to compensate i actually watched joe rogan's episode with alex jones and alex jones kept taking his headphones on and off he didn't know whether he wanted them on or off <laughs> how's the mix <laughs> these are getting in my way god damn it yeah huh. it is odd that he totally just does like a five-hour podcast every single day and never puts headphones on <laughs> and it's just him yeah, he has interviews sometimes. Yeah, but mostly it's just him spewing spittle at a microphone. And advertising. Yeah, and advertising. Jeez. Uh, male vitality. Male vita- male vitality supplements. <laughs> these are uh these are the best. They're made with they're made with they're made with horse barrel. <laughs> oh, it's better than a chocolate shake. <laughs> I I would drink this. Just as just as dessert, like at after dinner, but not even considering all the male vitality. <laughs> oh, Why yeah. does this is the best one? It's all creamy and thick. Why doesn't Elon Musk get into the bone broth market? <laughs> oh shit, that is a good question. It seems like that's really a booming industry right now. So I don't know why Elon Musk doesn't get in on that. Well, Maybe he prefers veggie broth. <laughs> <laughs> is Elon Musk a fucking vegetarian? <laughs> I don't know. All right, just just randomly accusing people of being vegetarians. All right, we're just making stuff off the top of our heads, going in without a plan. And we're, and we're, as always, we've as always we've completely forgotten to introduce our host until about our, until our guest until about five minutes in. So uh, hey, we had a brief, yeah, brief. Yeah, do, do you want to like? Did a quiet Nick. Do you want? Do you want to? Do you want to like properly introduce yourself? Talk about uh, you know what what you're doing. Hi, hi, <laughs> hi, <laughs> waving. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're waving. This is the podcast where we wave at people. The, it's a video podcast. Yeah. Um, the, the cameras are off right now, but you're missing some really great waving action. Yeah. Uh, Quiet Nick is here. I occasionally make music with one half of this podcast. And uh, is it talk, is it, is it talk me? about? Yeah, it's you. <gasps> oh, dude, awesome! It's Jack. Yeah, even though I'm on the Quiet Nick and an inanimate object cover, it's actually Jack masquerading as me. Yeah, I, I I pretend to be Ian most of the time, uh, you know, uses credit cards and such, and then sometimes I make music just to just to make it seem legit. Just go to work and for I actually each other. draw Jack's comic. Ah, oh, yeah, it's it's way better with him. Oh, yeah. It's painful though because he's so good at drawing, but he can't do it when he's him because everybody thinks that's my thing. So yeah, the the personas are just backwards. We had to flip. Yeah, and at this point, like I'm terrible at art, he's terrible at music, so we just kind of pretend to be each other. So mo- most of the time. 
I mean, if you're out somewhere and it comes up in conversation, do you pretty much just have to like kind of like side eye each other throughout the conversation mm-hmm. oh, yeah. as you're yeah. ad libbing? Like, is this something you would say? Is yeah. this something a comic artist does? Yeah, Ian and I are, have become just total masters of just like communicating through eye movements from across the room. Yeah, like office stares. Yeah, we just we just kind of mug to the camera, except we're each all, also also the camera. So we're just mugging to each other, and we just we're just like, "Yep, this is the situation we're in right now." <laughs> that one we use that one a lot. Get a lot of mileage out of it. When I was when I was on uh, when I was on the ship when I was you know sailing for the last couple months, uh, I kind of had gotten so used to being able to like do nonverbal cues like that with you that I started doing them with other people, and they just like didn't didn't get what I was doing at all. Like they didn't pick up on. It. It's like, why are you looking at me like that? But like after after about two months, uh, they did actually start picking up on it. It's like when we're dealing with a extremely drunk guest who's saying something racist, we'll both just kind of look at each other from across the room and just like bug our eyes out and just be like, mm, just kind of shake our heads like we do, like we do. And like it's like, all right, I've, I've trained I've trained them on it. Now they understand. <laughs> they speak my language with their eyes. It oh. was similar in the restaurant job that I finally just quit. Right on. Because cooking isn't for me. Yeah. But it would become like a game of charades to see how easily you could communicate what just happened in the front of the house once you came to the back. Yeah. And it would reach the point where you could easily look at somebody across the breezeway and know if it was a customer or somebody in the kitchen or the nature of the issue. And uh, it just became really useful for dealing with problems at work without making a big scene about anything. So, yeah, it's really great that you could share that skill of yeah. the silent communication, the silent communication. And yeah, like even just like, you know, for sailing, you have to be able to do like hand signals and stuff and like understand hand signals because like the captain's all the way back at the con at, all the way astern. You're up at the bow and, you know, it's 120 feet. So you're not you're not gonna be able to hear each other with the wind and with a bunch of drunk people shouting. So like you have to understand the hand signals. And I didn't for most of the time and like we had to make up some like one of our captains told us just like all right yeah just uh for crab trap just uh just pinch your hands like a crab just let me know, let me crab hands just let me know there's a crab trap up ahead right, so lobster. i don't run it over and like we just made up a couple for him and like you know stuff that you could you could figure out like kayaker i just i just flailed my arms like i was paddling a kayak and uh one i remember one time uh one of my shipmates sean hey sean uh it was he was up on bow watch and he was trying to alert the captain that there was a buoy dead ahead. And if you hit a buoy, bad stuff happens. So like he, he's trying to figure out what the signal is. What does a buoy do? It just kind of bobs up and down and is a, is like a signal for like where you are in the water and like, but how do you charade a buoy? Yeah, exactly. He was trying to figure out how to charade a buoy. He, he, he'd forgotten what the signal was. And so he just sort of started, he's a, he's a gentleman with a shaved head. So he just has a big bowling ball of a head and he just starts jumping up and down like with his arms at his side, like a fish breaching out of the water (laughs) to communicate buoy. And the captain's just like, what the fuck is he trying to say? Oh, okay. There's, there's a buoy. I guess that was meant to be buoy. All right, I got you. I see you. <sighs> Saved. Yeah. Saved the entire boat, but just didn't know how to say it. <laughs> In your brief stint on the opposite coast, do you now know how to convert between miles and nautical miles? No, I just kind of eyeball it. It's... I, fuck, it's... Mm, I, mm, <laughs> nautical miles are just... like It's just... It's basically a mile. You can you can just kind of you know, you know just fidget and it fits. It's like the difference between a yard and a meter. Yeah, and I like I I know that like a knot is like a mile an hour and some change, like one point two five miles an hour or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that 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 part I know. So like you know ten knots is probably like twelve and a half thirteen miles an hour. Did did you ever swim in the open ocean? I've done that before, and it's scary. Uh, I I have I have before. I didn't uh, during transit because like when we were taking when we were taking the ship north from uh, from the Bahamas to Boston, we were sailing twenty four seven, and uh, you know on the open ocean. So like we were never dropping anchor or anything. And like the safety talk we were giving our passengers when we were getting ready to go, you know the first mate who is from Boston and speaks very bluntly about things just says, "Uh, yeah, you fall off the boat, you're dead." You did. You did. 
you know, he just says it a couple times for emphasis. Like, we're going to do everything we can to get you back on, but uh, basically, you fall off the boat, you're dead. <laughs> and he just said that like six or seven times. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you fell off the boat, you were dead. But I, I swam in the Bahama, which is, in the Bahamas, which is like, I mean, it's technically open ocean. It's just a sheltered part of the Atlantic. It's shallow open yeah. ocean. It's it's shallow and it's not particularly uh, it's not particularly active water most of the time. But uh, yeah, I swam in that, and there are there are sharks there. We sw- we snorkeled a shipwreck actually when we were taking people around the Bahamas. Nice. Mm, yeah. That's very Bahama. Yeah. Yeah, but like we got to go like all these all these cool places that are tucked away that like you know in the carnival cruises never go because their boats are too fucking big. Like yeah, we uh, and ours never breaks down and becomes a floating poop prison. So there's that floating poop. You know when the what when the, becomes a floating poop prison? A carnival cruise ship when it breaks down and its plumbing overflows. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and people were trapped there for like a week and they couldn't get them off and they were just overflowing with poo. Ever, everyone to the upper decks or lower decks upper up yeah I, and do you want to get below it or deck. above it <laughs> i think well it's gonna flow down but, but uh, then the smell yeah the smell's then, gonna waft up but do you really want to be where the smell's originating from like if you're all the way up on top and you're outside the air is gonna at least dissipate I, a little bit do you really want to scrub that poop deck? the ocean breeze will, will carry scrub it away that poop deck that's a lot of poop deck to swab man those things are huge so I know you had uh, some pretty intoxicated people on your boat. Did you ever have to clean up puke? Uh, with, yeah, with, like the combination of seasickness and drunk. Yeah, a couple times. Uh, we actually had pretty pretty rough seas uh, the the first morning of our uh, of our last tour in the Bahamas, and uh, a lot of people were not suited for it. You know, and it was only like it was only like five six foot waves, but you know that'll toss a toss a boat like the Clipper around like crazy, and uh, yeah, so. <laughs> we uh we had a couple people bent over the sides and uh for some reason they went they went they puked uh upwind. Oh. So it just it just blew right back into the boat. They did not listen to our advice like part of the safety talk when we're getting ready to leave is just like, "Hey, you're going to get seasick. It happens. Chin up, shoot for distance." Cuz uh we'll be judging and if it lands on the deck, we'll be judging by taste. <laughs> Thankfully we were joking about that. At least nobody ever made me taste puke. I just had to clean it up. I did also have an old guy uh, sitting on a chair in uh, on the main deck, uh, you know, for the for the galley house, and uh, he was a big uh, he was a big heavy set dude, you know, where his his gut hangs between his knees when he's sitting down, and he's just a really really old dude, and like I, he I think he's he's napping, and then right when he wakes up, there's just a bunch of what I assume is water pouring out from the chair, <laughs> and then I look at him, I'm like, oh. Oh no! Oh. I'm like Terry, you doing okay, Terry? This is not his name, by the way. And he's just, just like, "Oh yeah, I'm fine. Can I get you? Can I get you anything?" No, I'm good. And then I just walk, and I'm just like, "Okay, great." Then I walk all the way back to the con where the captain and the first mate and a couple other people are standing. I'm just like, "Hey guys, um, bit of a question. Uh, not really a question, more just a statement. Uh, I think Terry pissed himself, and I don't think he knows." And they were just like, "Huh." What? And the captain, after a long moment of consideration, she's like, that, uh, that kind of sounds like Terry's problem. <laughs> I'm like, so what, sh- what should I do? I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, great. See if it's a problem when he gets out. Yeah. And then, he, and then I just walk away. I'm like, I'm okay. I'm just going to wait until mealtime when he goes down below to get food. And I'm just going to hose off this whole deck and this chair. Maybe throw this chair overboard. I don't know. But... Yeah, that was that was probably one of the one of the weirder messes that I had to deal with from somebody. Not necessarily the hardest to clean up, but just 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 odd. Yeah, peas easy. Yeah, peas easy, especially on a on an entirely waterproof deck. Just just spray that shit, a... spray that shit into the scuppers. Yeah, not ah, shit. Shit is harder. But you're not on a cruise ship. Yep, <laughs> there's only so much of it that the people we can fit onto that boat can produce. Yeah, and when we got back to Boston, uh, you know, we weren't taking people out overnight, so we were just taking them out on like two-hour day sails, and so we could put a lot more people on the boat. We just crammed it full of life jackets so that the Coast Guard would let us take more people out, and took a bunch of other shit off that we didn't need for, you know, Boston because it's right there on the dock every day. Uh, and so we were just we could take like upwards of a hundred people on the boat. We just didn't want to, <laughs> but uh, yeah, in two hours, a hundred people can produce a lot of poo. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and so every you know, 
every couple of days you end up being the duty person. And by that, I do mean the duty person. Like you have to, your job's like get up early, uh, make coffee for everybody, watch over the boat the entire 24 hours that you're on watch, just be on call for like anybody who's uh, spending the night on the boat if they need you and stuff like that. But your first job, aside from making coffee, is to run all the way over like a couple blocks over to another dock where we had our pump out boat, which is just this shitty little skiff with two big 120 gallon tanks on it and a hose and you just drive it back to the boat both boats you have to pump out our our boat and our sister boat before they head out and you just have to pump the poop out of both of them and uh the big one's so big that uh you know you have to you have to pump it out from like several different tanks and also the gray water whereas the small one just has one tank for poo and just flushes its gray water overboard so yeah i I'm, i've handled a lot of poo recently a lot more poo than i was expecting but you know, character molding. That's sa- that's sailor living. A lot of poo. I thought there would be less poo given the century that we're in, but you know, still a lot of poo. Did a uh, bird ever poop on you? <laughs> Birds pooped on the deck all the time. Yeah. And when we were when we were taking the boat north, uh, you know, we're on the open ocean nonstop, so birds would just kind of start following us. Like they would fly behind us, uh, place to stay, catch up to about the bow, and then drop into the water and just sit there and recover, and then they do it again for like hours birds followed Mm -hmm. us like that for hours and sometimes they'd hang out like on board the ship and just like uh, and like we we would just do a bit where we were pretending that we were the birds and they were just like oh hey there's a tree out here just hangs out in the mast she's like ah the tree's moving don't know where it's going it's just a tree (laughs) i'm gonna live in this tree (laughs) convenient yeah convenient mobile sometimes land adjacent it's a perfect tree takes you wherever you want to go Ocean trees. Ocean tree. Some say dry while others feel the pain. <laughs> Ocean tree. <laughs> We're writing a songs for him. <laughs> uh, welcome back, Tazon Day. We just written back. We just written your comeback song. Don't don't forget. Yeah, exactly. Turn your turn your head away from the mic to breathe. I take a I turn my head to breathe in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Thank God. you, Tazon Day. You really <laughs> made my childhood. Yep. And gave us some important advice about recording. Turn your head Genuinely away. Genuinely good lyrics. Yeah. Don't understand what, what the chocolate rain is, but uh, god damn, it's provocative. <laughs> it's provocative imagery. I um auditioned for reading two audiobooks recently, neither of which I'll get, but I was trying my hardest That's to good. like not get breath intertwined with the lines. <laughs> yeah. So then Lennon. <laughs> God. So then Lennon. <laughs> when I try to do breathings, I have I mostly just have a really bad problem with punctuation. I I can't not run on sentence. Mm. It it just I don't know where to stop cuz the paragraphs don't work. Whoever was typing this obviously, I mean, doesn't stop to breathe between <laughs> typing between <the> paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Ocean breeze for long <laughs> typing sessions. Ocean breeze for long typing sessions. White noise generator. Ten hours. YouTube. Just throw in, throw in the pepper in the occasional seagull on off in the distance. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Little... okay. When we were, you know, when we were sailing north, uh, we were being passed by this, by this big barge, like three times as long as we were. Just this rusty, nasty barge that i guess was carrying trash or something i don't know but uh yeah like they passed us and like whenever you get really close uh together you know like risk like potential risk of a collision you talk to each other on a on the radio and so like our captain and their captain were talking it's like as they're and like i just come over like as they're already passing us so like we the conflict has been resolved but i come back and they're still talking on the radio and he's just like oh yeah liberty clipper on facebook yeah just check us out all right uh yeah what a and like they just they just keep having a nice conversation over the radio after avoiding hitting each other just like so uh yeah what what kind of music are you into oh uh, you know I uh <laughs> it's just like they were just they just went on for like five minutes just talking to each other I'm a big fan of you know uh who's that guy Skrillex <laughs> <laughs> the captain did not say Skrillex unfortunately <laughs> that would that would have made it even funnier but no they like it was just so odd like just. Usually she's like, hey, don't hit me. All right, I'm going to go this way. All right, I'm going to go that way. Thanks. Conversation over. But they just kept talking at, like, friends for five minutes. 
She's like, okay, so you guys, you guys sail down in the Bahamas? Oh yeah, we uh, we take people around for like six days. You know, that's just for that's just for the winter season. Then we go out to Boston. Oh, that's cool. So you do the same thing up there? No, we just do it. We just do it during the day. Oh, all right, cool. Yeah, awesome. Well, I, if I'm ever in Boston, I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah, come on over. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they just kept going. So when they shared their Facebook, was that like the name of a company or does their individual boat have a page you can go like and kind of be a fan of that boat? Uh, really I really like that barge. I think we have, uh, no, like it was, it was for, it was for our Facebook. Oh, for your Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, uh, like, I think we have Liberty Fleet of Tall Ships as a Facebook page. And then we also have Liberty Clipper and Liberty Star as a Facebook page, which is just the boats. Gotcha. They're, they're basically the same Facebook page. I don't know why we have two. Maybe some people just I, they I, they only like this boat. How long was it? How long were you on the other side? Uh, a couple of months. Like, was it two, two and some change? Yeah, it was like two and a half. Yeah, and I was, Matt, I was gone for like two and a half months. I was down in the Bahamas for a couple of weeks, and then we were sailing for about ten days to get to Boston, and then I was in Boston for a little over a month. And uh, a little over a month of Boston will. That that'll create madness. I mean, you're been to Boston. I haven't. Uh, most of my family on my mom's side came from Boston, and uh, they still don't pronounce their R's. But um, yeah, of course not. No, yeah. I haven't. But uh, yeah, I worked. Okay, Boston. It looks nice in the yeah. pictures. I mean, tell tell me about Boston. Yeah. I mean, it's it's beautiful. But like, I'm just saying, like, as far as madness goes, uh, I worked Fourth of July in Boston, Massachusetts. Which, oh God! I don't know if you know, they take that holiday very seriously up there. <laughs> yeah. I wonder why. Yeah. So we were like, oh God. Both ships were you know sailing out bright and early. The Clipper had to go out at seven a.m. to for the turnaround of the Constitution, which I don't know why because they didn't even bring it out until nine o'clock. And then it didn't, like, they were working around the clock until midnight. 7 a.m. to midnight, sailing that boat all over the place. And I was on the other ship, sailing a similar schedule, starting a little bit later. But, like, everybody was drinking. Of course. Most people were forgetting to tip. We did have this one really fun, like, old old uh, Massachusetts, like, old New England gay couple who were, like, uh, hanging out on the boat early in the morning, like, our first sail. And like they were just they were just talking, just shooting the shit, teasing each other and stuff like that. They were funny as hell, and like just drinking a bunch of rosé. And then like uh, they forgot they didn't have any cash when they were getting out the boat, but they felt so bad about not tipping that one of them ran all the way to the ATM and came back. And they bought and they drank twenty one dollars in rosé, and then they just gave us sixty dollars and said keep the rest. So they gave us a pretty honking big tip, and it's like that's good. And then everything else after that was just crazy. Just drunk people. That's, and, that's the last thing you remember. Drunk people and clogged toilets. Oh, I, clogged toilet on a boat is a lot of fun, especially on a small boat where you only have the one. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Boston is Boston is pretty cool. Uh, I remember, you know, like we, we we rented a dock from the New England Aquarium, like at Long Wharf. So we were just like just to the right of the New England Aquarium in the water, and uh, we were taller. We were taller than the aquarium. Our ship's huge. And uh, because of our business arrangement, uh, crew members were able to get in free, you know, to the aquarium as long as they could, like, you know, prove that they worked for the for the fleet. And so, like, I went in there a couple times, saw a huge fucking sea turtle and a bunch of penguins fucking and stuff like that, a bunch of seals. We also threw out our trash in their trash compactor. It's like you see like a family and like the kids are just watching the seals and like, Oh, they're so beautiful. And like, there's a window and you can just see two sweaty fucking sailors walk up with a cart full of trash, open just, up the door uh, and just like, just <laughs> hurling them in. Cause that's where we get out all of our aggression, just screaming and throwing them in. And the family's just staring at us the whole time. And then like a bag rips open and beer and garbage juice flies everywhere. And we're both just like, Oh, it's all over me. And then we just had to pick it all up and throw it in. We were getting mad, really mad at it at that point. So we were just hurling it overhand into the garbage compactor. And we just look over and the family's looking at us. One time we did that. And, uh, it turned out there was a wedding happening on the, on the pier right nice. outside the aquarium. And like, it was a small wedding. It was like 20 people, but, uh, like they were all just, they were all just standing together. And like the ceremony was happening. And like right at the vows, my buddy and I just start throwing trash into the compactor. Hey, it's their fault. Usually they put up a sign and tell us, hey, private event, no throwing out the trash, you know, for these hours. But nobody told us. So I walked over there and I, and I just, we just 
some people might consider that a an unfortunate and foreboding omen about their uh, about the longevity of their marriage. Just two guys throwing trash right next to them when they're making their vows. But but then what if they like laughed and had a really great time and it was memorable? I choose, and then it's I, like then you know it's solid. Yeah, I choose to believe that those people were really, were really cool what if and they thought both it was hilarious. Garbage tracks. Ooh, good question, Ian. Yeah, that, yeah. I just choose to think that they were really cool and that like they just laughed about it, and now they tell that story to everybody. It's like, oh my god, when we got married, you would not believe this. These two sweaty fucking schooner bums come over with a cart full of trash and start throwing it into the compactor while we're doing our vows. <laughs> Take my, it from the top. My dad was a tugboat captain. No way, mine too. My mom was also a tugboat captain. <laughs> <gasps> Get out of town. <laughs> Okay, so like I think this is, I think this is the first time we brought it up on the show. But uh, now we're gonna be those two annoying guys asking you if you've seen a show that we like. Have you seen Patriot? Oh, please interrogate me because that's easy. I have not seen Patriot. I don't have a Netflix actually. Yeah, it's, I it's, don't have cable. It's Amazon Prime. Yeah, it's on. Am- oh, I it's, it's on Amazon. Don't have that. Yeah, yeah. But it's just, I mean, it's just. Tell me what what is the it's, premise? It's an odd show. It's like, it's like a spy thriller, but just a couple degrees off. Like everything's just a little bit off. The the spy is terrible at lying. In, like and main dialogue just runs on way too long where yeah. any other director would cut it. Yeah, just for is super like, long. Is like, it like overtly a comedy or is it like one of those shows that's like I can't tell if it's a it's a it's a comedy, but it's a very it's a dark comedy. I see. Like, it's got the, action yeah. packed in it yeah, into the, it too. The main the main character is, you know, a spy and he's just always got this horrible thousand yard stare, always looks out of place in every situation and is just so depressed and sleep deprived that he's just terrible at his job and the job that he's pretending to have. He These even... are the people protect. This is our first line of defense. Yeah, here and like he doesn't even have like an exciting like James Bond cover where he's like you know working for like the bad guy to secret lair or anything. No, it's it's like more realistic espionage and he just works for like an industrial piping company. Oh, that yeah. And he's just he's just there, there's office... some long yeah. speeches on piping. Yeah, and he's just getting <laughs> crushed by corporate life while also being crushed by sleep deprivation and post traumatic stress. And meanwhile, he's got to be a spy. Yeah, it's damn. Yeah, so he's burnt the fuck out all the time. But like, at one point, there's I'm not trying to give away too much, but like, there's a scene where he's just sitting on a park bench, and he just like pulls out his phone and calls somebody. Just like, hey, is Charlie there? W- what is Charlie there? My my dog. My dog's name's Charlie. Yeah. Can I talk to your dog? Do you you want to talk to my dog? Yeah, man. I brought him. I, you lost him. He ran away. I brought him back a couple of years ago. I just want to see how he's doing. I don't I don't understand. I just want to talk to your dog, man. What's the fucking problem? <laughs> that really resonates with me cuz I still I've found a couple of dogs and either returned them to owners or found them new homes and every once in a while i still find myself thinking like oh i should see how that dog's doing yeah not like i'll call their owner up and like be like hey schedule hey, a play date hey just put, like, put skip on the phone i want to hear him <gasps> hey oh yeah there he is his name's not skip but i named him skip while i had him he Baxter, sounds stressed don't speak spanish in english please <laughs> <laughs> so patriot yeah it's it's an, I'm I'm still like watching the first season. I don't think there is a second season yet, but no the the pilot came out in 2015. The rest of the first season came out last year, and I did look it up on Wikipedia. The a second season is coming Woo! sometime this year or next year. Yay. Is that kind of was it like True Crime or True Detective that like had a season and then came back like years later? Was that one of those shows? Uh, I think I, I think those seasons were pretty close together. I never actually watched it though. Um, do you mean like Twin Peaks? Well, I mean, those were like, that true, was like 15 years apart. Uh, that was Matthew were, McConaughey. Yeah, yeah I, I know, I know, right. but like that. I thought there was yeah. like a gap between those. Maybe I'm mixing I up think, shows. I think they were only like a year apart. Uh, Twin Peaks is a little, that's a pretty big gap. Yeah. But uh, I haven't seen either of those. I'll I'll steal my mother's Amazon Prime password yeah, and man. check out that Patriot. Do it. Yeah. It sounds, uh, <laughs> they kind of, does anyone enjoy the work of Tim Heidecker? Yeah. Yes. Of yeah. Here? Has anyone seen Decker? Yes, the, yes, uh, Decker, 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 Decker unclassified. Oh yeah, that is he. Oh god, yeah. He is protecting our nation right now <laughs> from special interests, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the president. He's protecting us from the president. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Decker. Now we're now that we're on the on the you know vein of uh, weird Adult Swim shows. Have you guys ever seen a NTSF SD SUV? Yeah, I've oh, seen it when boy. you've been watching it. Yeah. 
It's 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 a show set in San Diego, so I have I have to watch it. You know, Pacific Pride and everything, but like, it's just it's just an entire spoof on you know like NCIS and you know CSI. And, I was gonna say, what is that acronym? Yeah, I, National wait NTSF National Terrorism Strike Force San Diego Sports Utility Vehicle. <laughs> Oh, there's NTSF wow. SD SUV. <laughs> <laughs> but I just I just remember you mentioning like he's protecting this from the president and like uh one of the characters on that on NTSF SD SUV. God, it, even in, as an acronym, it's a fucking mouthful. But like uh it's Rob Riggle as the president of the Navy, who's this, you know, eccentric nutball and he just he sometimes he's working for the government sometimes he just goes off on his on the fringe and just blows shit up and there's like ah, well that's the president of the navy just doing what he does solo work yeah on the front lines yeah and he's just he's just dressed like the president but he has a navy hat oh man yeah he's he's president of the navy <laughs> and of course he's you know it's like ncis so it's navy so he's their boss but like it's just Adult Swim is just just terrific, just super dumb, and I love it. I'm so glad a block like that exists. Yeah. Whether I like even a majority or even a minority no, dude, of the programs yeah, on at the you're, moment, you're I'm luck, glad. You're lucky if you like maybe a third of the things that Adult Swim is putting on at any given time. But, but it's, there's it's a it's televised a, segment yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, but it's just such a fucking grab bag of what you're going to get that you kind of just like it even when you don't like what you're watching. It's like I mean, it's like growing up watching Toonami. It's like yeah. I was I wasn't I didn't realize I was in anime until I was like twenty two and yeah. you're like, Oh, those those weird cartoons <laughs> with the low frame rate, those were anime? Oh, okay. I just, yeah, I, I guess didn't I give it that. a chance until I was nineteen or twenty. I didn't like anime as a kid. Yeah. I was into it because it was like you go home and Toonami's on yeah. and Yu Yu Haku show or whatever. Dragon I was never into Dragon Ball. Uh I'm very underground. But um <laughs> <laughs> I like I I, I don't sure when it comes to anime. I don't I don't actually believe this, but I do like to say it when like I'm near somebody who's a huge anime fan just to piss them off. Just like please do. Yeah, the only the only real anime is Dragon Ball Z. Fuck you. <laughs> See it Can works every time. Every time it works. The only real anime is King of the Hill. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is that's true. Yeah. That that is genre defining. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I mean, we're, we're like that's my purse. I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> that's right, Bobby. No balls. Dale, Just... if it gets one degree hotter, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> <sighs> oh. oh, and now we're just gonna quote King of the Hill. Yeah. <laughs> No, but really, I mean, ten plus seasons, I think, or something yeah, like that. It was, I mean, about, it was about ten seasons. That's a very successful <laughs> series, and I it mean, never, it never really like you know wore out its welcome. It, it ended when it when it should have. And now, like the uh, opposite of animes that Silicon go on Valley. forever. Yeah, huh? and now Mike Judge is doing Silicon Valley. Have is you he? seen that? Oh, that's him. Yeah, that's he's behind that. Oh, oh, all right. And they kicked T.J. Miller off. Yeah, makes sense. Who is that? He's a comedian who did some messed up stuff that we all heard about after Harvey Weinstein. Oh. Yeah. I live under a rock. Um, oh. If it's related to a similar behavior as the whole Weinstein thing, then... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. He's not really affiliated with that yeah, anymore. Just, just kind of just don't have um, a career anymore. Pro- probably a good move. Yeah. For everyone. Yeah. This topic again. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, any listeners out there? Uh, is anybody listening? <laughs> is there are, anybody are out live? there? Are we on Instagram Live right now? Is this know. thing is it on? Check. So Ian, make sure that the podcast is on. <laughs> are, we, are we streaming? The podcast is on. I've are, been periodically checking it. Comments enabled? Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. Never. No, no. I had to show my mom how to use YouTube streaming this morning. What, yesterday what is what is she wait for watching you, one or yeah, like streaming her activities yeah because i'm like what is your mom streaming watching one oh uh, okay she should stream yeah I don't, I don't really know what she would stream but whatever uh yeah everyone's a star watching watching that dave matthews live getting that rare dave matthews oh uh, that, that, but, that good that good good dave ding, matthews ding, chimes oh man i could really get down on some dave matthews man um <laughs> She just didn't want to see the comments, you know, people talking shit about Dave Matthews in the well, comments section. Who, who has the commitment to go and watch 
a Dave Matthews live stream just to leave mean <laughs> comments for Dave Matthews, who is definitely not watching it because he's busy performing all those just terrible songs. Oh, there's no, some 14-year-old who's, who's learning it. about music who has enough time. <laughs> I just wanted to say that Dave Matthews isn't a real jam band. <laughs> <laughs> he's nothing like Led Zeppelin or the Beatles. I don't think they were considered jam bands. Zeppelin could totally be defined as a jam band. Yeah, okay, for okay, sure. Yeah, have you for seen sure. like the, yeah. the 30 minute version of No Quarter? Yeah, okay. okay. And I was Ze- saying that Zeppelin. before he said jam band. Yeah, Ze- Zeppelin, I'll give you, but I don't know the about Beatles. the Beatles. No, the Beatles are definitely like prog rock <laughs> for sure. They, they pretty much sound like Dream Theater. <laughs> <laughs> they admitted shredding. <laughs> Screaming, dude. I mean, John Lennon's vocals on Twist and Shout. I mean, that was screamo before anyone did like a bull cut that was longer in the back. <clears throat> Janis Joplin did it first. Although bull cut in the back is a bold look. Yeah, it's, it's all about that 1999 Washington D.C. scrams <laughs> haircut. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a mullet, but like super neat and curled inward, like a like a bull cut. So it's like a bull. It's like a bull mullet. It's a bullet. Yeah. Stud belt, but like Hot Topic doesn't exist yet, so it's like, a, it's, like, it's like a real stud belt. Yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah, where were you in '99? I mean, I was I was at Woodstock '99. <laughs> I was just I was just pooping myself to get out of school. Hell yeah, yeah. I did, I did that when I was like, God, how old was I? And so you could go to Woodstock '99. You, you, you said '99, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was I was four, so at about that time I was just like I didn't want to go to choir practice, so I would just like make eye contact with my teacher and shit myself to get out of it power play yeah oh yeah i, feel I, that. I hated choir too i i have an off-key singing voice so i was singled out a lot yeah i just i just really didn't want to do it and she was like if you poop your pants you can't come to choir i was like okay you should not what? have given me that information because <laughs> that- of the two things i'll definitely do that over the other and then i just looked right into her eyes and just like <clears throat> what do you get do bad i did it like two or three times too <laughs> that's such a very specific thing to have to tell the kid not to do yeah don't poop your pants or you can't come to yeah quiet. i had already done it accidentally and then and then she, you realize that oh yeah. hey and then she was like why'd you poop your pants i was like, i didn't mean to it was a fucking accident god duh i was a kid I'm probably not how i said it as a child but it was it was up here the feeling was up here i just didn't have the words yet but uh yeah and then she told me like you can't poop your pants anymore if you poop your pants you can't come to choir i was like huh <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and then a plan was hatched. A plan oh, that man. worked like two or three times. And then you made it to Woodstock. Yeah. All I had to do was shit my way out of the problem. And then I made it to Woodstock. And then you just got shit right back on you. Yeah. All, all <laughs> that friend mud. Did. Yeah. <laughs> just everyone was shitting. LSD makes you poop yourself. Uh, Woodstock flip- 99 was filled with it. Flipping cars. Oh, yeah. Lighting I, things on fire. Little four-year-old me was flipping cars and throwing Molotovs. Mm-hmm. It's just anarchy. Wearing my underpants on my head. I probably should have changed before I came to Woodstock '99 because that was that was not well thought out. But it was just poo at that point. Everything was poo. They were charging for waters, and people started lighting things on fire. It was it was mass hysteria. A guy a guy drank water out of a boot print. A boot, a boot print. Yeah, he drank water out of a boot print. Like, yeah, on the ground. In the mud. Yeah. It was mass hysteria. It wasn't actually mud. It was mostly poo. Why am I? I'm like envisioning that like being from something. It probably is. Something. Do you think nothing's original? Do you think in like the old days when we were stalking mammoth, like we would uh, kind of just follow really far behind and wait for rain to kind of fill their footsteps and then kind of drink from their footsteps? Yeah, I mean, like as we're yeah. following the mammoth. Yeah, I mean, like hun- hunting. Tired. Hunting back in those days was just all about like, all right, let's just follow it until it forgets we're following it, or it gets really tired and doesn't fight back, and then we just kill it, scare it over this cliff. Gotcha. Yeah, that was like short range version. Just scare it over a cliff and then eat from the mangled hump of bones. But uh, yeah, like we used to hunt horses by just like walking towards them, and then they'd run away, and then we'd keep walking towards them, and then they'd run away again until they were exhausted, and then we just walk up and kill them. Animals should just be calm. Yeah. You know, when the bird yeah. just takes a step or two. Yeah, you ever seen It Follows? That's just us. We we did that to horses. I didn't see It Follows, and I want you to spoil it for the whole podcast right now. <laughs> okay, here's a spoiler for It Follows. I'm going to tell it you. It could be I'm, taken as an abstinence tale. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the entire plot of the movie real quick here. 
it follows the end. <laughs> I mean, I guess that makes sense. It totally seems like one of those movies that doesn't have a resolution. It, you can spoil that for me. It really doesn't. It does yeah. not. It does yeah. not. It has an amazing soundtrack. Yeah. It does? Yeah. Okay. I'm, all, I'm, I'm in, oh, interested dude, in the that. soundtrack. Uh, like, I remember I saw it before you did, and you were saying, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go see I'm going to go see It Follows. I was like, dude, you're going to fucking love the soundtrack, because I know your priorities when you watch a movie, and you're going to fucking love the soundtrack. Yeah, you are right. Yeah. <laughs> what instrument was that? I don't know. It was like a... It was like synth, some kind of synth. Yeah. I can hear it. Like, yeah. think the Stranger Things soundtrack, but more evolved. Yeah. I like that you used that term. Like, like more, more whittled down. Like, there's no, like, there's no drums or anything or percussion of any kind. It's just, it's just like one sort of tone, like a couple tones put together. And it's just, it's just very, it's very moody and strange. Mm -hmm. I like it. I'll check it out. Yeah, I think the artist's name who uh, did that is uh, Disaster Piece. Oh yeah, yeah, like the Slipknot song. <laughs> I was gonna say that name sounds super familiar. <laughs> Disaster Pieces. Man, is, it, is anyone still into Slipknot? Yeah, I yeah, still listen. I yeah. I, am. I think we're, I think we're all at that stage where we're like coming full circle. Like we we liked bands unironically at a certain age, and then we got to an age where it was like, oh, it's it's cool to not like these bands. These bands fucking suck. And it's like, we were, we were just trying to be detached from that, and then like we come back around, we're just like, you know what? For what it is, I actually really like this. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Love yeah. it and make fun of it. Yeah, I've, like Chiodos is super marked by its time, but I could still listen to oh, that God. and enjoy it. Yeah, dude, people are people are like unironically super into Linkin Park again. I mean, I, I guess it makes sense because, you know, people do that thing when people pass away you know yeah yeah I, I mean like it, it was it was happening before but before his death like it, in the last like three years i've noticed that i feel like that yeah, made it I sadder mean, the, the because they were totally that they put out like everybody hated and yeah i mean i mean like just the lincoln park that we all listened to oh when yeah we were younger like, like hybrid it's theory it's yeah, every, yeah everybody pretends every like for 10 years everybody was just pretending like ah fucking lincoln park like they do with every other band that they were super into at one point and then like we're all just kind of coming back and being like, okay, these these songs do fucking slam. All right. You can't pretend that Linkin Park with Jay Z live didn't happen. Yeah. Like, I mean, can't. that's the best collaboration you can't album the ever. Collision course. Collision. Co <laughs> I was, couldn't think of the name. Thank you. My God. I can. Oh. I, I could never get that one when I was a kid. My parents wouldn't let me get it with the cussing, and well, with, I told them I don't want that Walmart censored POS. I don't buy. I don't buy music from Walmart. Uh, don't buy that censored garbage. <laughs> yeah, I remember I tried to buy uh, a Slipknot CD at Circuit City. They actually enforced oh, yeah. it parental advisory. So I went to Music Trader, who never asked for it. They would sell you anything. Yeah, we did that together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was fun. I, I still have that. I still have that album. You you mean they would actually like ask ID? Yeah, like Circuit City would ID adv for parental advisory. Oh, sh that's why I went into business. Sorry, yeah. Circuit City. I love yeah. you. This, this sticker is not. This is why you went bankrupt and all your locations closed. Did Cir is Circuit City gone? Yeah, it is. I think, huh. I think the name returned as an online distributor, but I don't know if it's the same like ownership or anything. Yeah, probably. probably yeah, like not. how Blockbuster kind of stuck around after it went away. Yeah, well, they 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 were like implementing a Netflix type like mail in movies model alongside their stores, and then they like I actually loved this when it was happening, like because there used to be a Blockbuster like. A cup like a mile and a half away from our house, and I would just walk up there and get movies. But like they had a policy where it's like if you return a mail-in movie to the store, you can get a free rental. Oh, yeah, that was a good fucking deal. And eventually, they realized that they were hemorrhaging money, so they got rid of that. I was like, oh, well, fuck I that. Guess, did they think they were saving at first? Maybe like stop saving postage, like getting you to make the delivery for them or something. I guess, uh, yeah. Or it was just incentive to also sign up for the for the mail thing. Mm. Yeah, because it was a separate thing that you had to sign up for. But like, yeah, once once Netflix like really started like streaming stuff, it was like, oh yeah, there's there's really no point to this. And then like all the blockbusters closed down. I think their website held on for a little while longer. Yeah, and then they there, went, there's went still two. one in Oregon. There were two in Alaska, which I saw CJ posts that those two are closing down. Yeah, they're they're on their way out. I, I remember in Big Bear, there's not still a blockbuster open, but there is a blockbuster sign. Yeah, like you know, Ooh. in the in the big sign outside I the strip Jersey mall with all Mike's the I think Jersey Mike's is taking logos. over that that part of the building. Yeah, huh. they should leave the sign up. 
yeah, just as a reminder, as a warning. As a warning, <laughs> as a warning to any other do, video stores. Do good things. This is what happens. You want to keep your business here. <laughs> if you this, let this be a warning to all of you, don't be blockbuster. That's oh, all. Man. I I was always a Hollywood video person <laughs> myself. Game crazy, you know. But uh Oh, and now I'm just having nostalgia for the early 2000s and taking my mouth off the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the early 2000s nostalgia period. Yeah. It's actually yeah, the 80s the 80s aesthetic is I feel like we're kind of skipping the 90s like yeah, the 80s I mean, like, aesthetic the 90s, is kind of The 90s were just cultural leftovers of the 80s. So yeah, yeah it's 90s kinda... revival happened in music, but not in culture as a whole. Yeah, because what happened in culture aside from music in the 90s? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, some of the oh, man, some of the lesser true. Schwarzenegger movies, and that's kind of <laughs> yeah. So I can't wait until we're until we're writing that. You know, uh, veganism early... became popular again uh, for the first time. Yeah. Or vegetarianism. A lot of flannel. A lot of flannel. Oh, but that's God. more tied into music. So I think we can just count that as a as a music category. Thanks to thanks to grunge. Oh yeah. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, I can't wait for us to ride into uh, early 2000s nostalgia where people are nostalgic for the looks of the early 2000s. I'm like, you know, really terrible looks like denim everything except for a mesh tank top and super white Nikes. Thank, thank you, <laughs> hip hop. Fu- fuzzy bucket hats, frosted tips. I want that look to come tips. back. The, oh, man. The first sign of 2000s revival was when Vaporwave was created. You know Vaporwave, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just thinking of something else. Uh, like those shell bead necklaces. Oh, the puka shell. Puka shell po- Puka oh, shell. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I'm looking at those, and I'm like, obviously trends change, but I look at those, and I'm like, even back then, how could any of you like, think this was fashionable? I'm like, what the hell is that thing on Seven your neck? Seven-year-old me thought it was fashionable. I want Justin I, oh, Timberlake to me regrow too. his ramen noodle hair. I, I can't understand it, but yeah, dude, I had, I had a bunch of puka shells. Now I I wish I had all like the feminine aesthetics of the '90s because like oh, yeah. the choker with the combat boots is like that, 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 that is all look they that, had it figured out in the '90s guys not so much oh, dude man. fanny packs are coming back thank you there's thank like God. leather fanny packs <laughs> there's like leather fanny packs there's like style and like utilitarian like sportswear fanny packs it's like man oh, pack like this is a streamlined feet fanny pack for the modern era it's like you you still have to call it a fanny pack it it's still is pack. that rock the fanny pack yeah don't. Don't try to rebrand it. Just make it what it is. Make it a yeah. terrible, hilarious piece of clothing that you always look super dorky in, and people will just go for it anyway. Now people wear it all over. You know, you rock it like under the shoulder. Oh Yeji, yeah, Yeji's got the shoulder yeah. fanny pack. I was I was a camp counselor, and we had to wear fanny packs with like first ca- first aid and such, and to clip our walkie talkies onto. And one of the guys did that, and I was just like, nah, n- no, trendsetter. Yeah, or, or the tie that that holds your glasses on. Your oh. did, did you ever see those? It's the, just like it a little like strap fabric. that it just, holds it your straps in the back. Yeah, just just a lanyard. I've never seen one that straps in the back. I've just like like a bunch of guys on the boat. We always just made like lanyards out of same twine to keep our sunglasses on. But like you know, because they'll fall overboard otherwise. But like I've never seen something that complicated for holding your sunglasses. Where it, you said it like straps together in the back. Well, yeah, it has like loose ends. Um, but it's like two s- strings of fabric, and then there's a little plastic thing to adjust it. So you could put it like right out on the back of your head or like let it dangle. Uh, that's string. weird. But no matter what it you do, it was pretty early 2000s. I remember seeing here. a few of those. Hmm. Oh, you guys remember Hit Clips? Yes. <laughs> hit Clips. I want to release my music on Hit Clips. <laughs> yeah, I'll, man. I'll overcompress it and dude, make it a minute long. Dude, we brought back cassette. We can bring back Hit Clips. It was well, it was hit clips and then there was the little separate of course because nothing is a smartphone. Uh, what was that separate <laughs> device for watching single episodes of your favorite TV show? Oh, or some I, of them weren't even episodes. It was like clips of <laughs> your episodes. I, like, yeah, because they couldn't get all the data onto it. I had some I, Drake and Josh and some fairly obvious. I parents. know, I know what you're talking about. I just totally forget what it's called. I I fucking remember those, but fuck, man, I think Amazing. there were TV episodes for Game Boy too at some point. What? Yeah, I don't recall this. Something like that. Like, yeah. did did Hit Clips actually have the whole song on them? No, they had like a minute. Yeah, um, that's right. Now I remember. I was or, like, or just the chorus. Yeah, and it it was mono, um, super over compressed MP3 because there wasn't that much space on yeah. these tiny little it, things. It was what JPEG artifacts sound like. Yeah, yeah. I think that was specifically designed by parents. Like, okay, like. 
I cannot listen to my child. Like earbuds are getting cheaper. I cannot listen to my child repeat specifically like 30 seconds of this song in the car a hundred times between here and school twice a day one more time i can't hear it one more time we're getting the hit clip my, All ba- he needs my baby is cannot hook. hit me one more time he doesn't care about he doesn't care about the second verse he just wants the intro and the hook let's get him the hit clip and put your earbuds on and go to your room for the hit clip since, that since it was again. mono they just had one earbud not two. Oh my god i, I remember, see i never I, had yeah. the hit clip i didn't realize it was uh, i remember mono. i remember not even plugging in earbuds just just listening to it out loud on the quote unquote speaker that was yeah on the they, thing. they had like a little boom box player for it too along with the tiny one yeah <laughs> my god what a ridiculous time <laughs> i cannot wait for them to make more movies where a bunch of precocious kids fight a monster in the early 2000s oh. they're all just they're all just hanging out playing gamecube and then they're like hey guys Timmy got eaten by a werewolf. We got to do something. Okay. But I'm like, I'm playing Wind Waker. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are we going to do about all these Doritos? <laughs> I was actually just watching, like, someone on YouTube did a whole, like, 20 minute deconstruction of Bionicle. Like, the, oh, especially, like, like the first how one. How could we or not two. reference Bionicle Jack already? And I own how, could, how could we not reference Bionicle already at this point? Incredible. I feel bad for us. They went into, like, the cultural, like, just like the deep lore the the deep lore of like they opened a book about mary maori culture oh yeah how yeah maori, i really maori, want to pronounce yeah. that correctly maori. it's like someone at lego just opened a book of that culture and they're like that word looks cool that word looks cool that yeah, word looks cool kind of bam p- new did, toy line yeah, I, did, I did kind of pick up on that as i learned yeah more they took like about the world. vaguely polynesian sounding names matanui yeah and then uh, the dudes with the little masks inside them, and they like dart their head forward. They got the little like lever action body. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Little pods. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible toys with lore. I'm a, I'm about that. Toys with lore. Why is that not a thing as much now? Yeah, ki- I mean, ki- like kids build Legos, but like kids just play with iPhones. Ah, damn it! Hey, tr- kids. So I, I felt myself getting old, and I just had to vent some of my old energy. <laughs> I've noticed <laughs> some it, of my like, old man energy. Original IPs in the toy industry are yeah. like non-existent. Like it just even like I noticed the Lego section because I go to the toy section all the time. Duh. Um, I noticed the Lego section. It's it's just like Star Wars and then some Harry Potter maybe. Yeah, and, uh, there's like Ninjago. It's, it's, who, it's mostly yeah, licensed stuff. What that is. Yeah, it's mostly licensed stuff. And like Most, yeah. the stuff that is originally Lego is few and far between, and like and now there's like adult Lego, like yeah. those nano, yeah. like super. And, and for the most part, those don't even interest. Like uh, the the branded Legos, like with their own story and stuff, don't really interest me. I just want to play with Legos. But like if they release something like you know, you know, different from regular Legos, like they do with Bionicle, and still you know putting stuff together. So but like that that made more sense to me to have it be its own thing with like lore and story and shit movies i still remember like being like me and my friend waiting all week like oh yeah the movie's gonna be on on friday when we get home from school we just gotta make sure we get home in time see the movie yeah yeah <laughs> or it might have been streaming on the internet it might have they might have been pretty advanced with it uh yeah, I, streaming the movie i think they may have just put it on lego's website in like a super compressed yeah. video I, they, dude, they had a great website going on. <laughs> Desi- they had like the whole design, like studio thing, like putting your own stuff together. Oh yeah, the shit, whole, I remember that. The whole Mindstorms, like early robotics thing. Yeah, which I'm still gonna go find like a used, like a one of those <laughs> thingy magic things. Yeah, one of them things. Legos, but then it has a microcomputer, and you make it a robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, you make a little Lego robot. Yeah. yeah. It's got like a motor and shit. Super oh, cool. Man. Those things could get, they like rebooted it. I don't remember what, what word they added to it, but they rebooted it probably like 10 years ago, maybe a little less. And those things got like pretty advanced. I mean, yeah, same kit you would see on like a high-end quadcopter. Yeah, I think we actually like for our school project we ended up getting like a bunch of those like a bunch of those uh those kits for really cheap and then like we had to build our own stuff uh you know around it 
like to just build a robot and like we, i think we got a couple other parts but like just stuff that was lying around the shop mostly and so we built little robots with those ours did not work at all and my friends also built a different one and it worked but uh during the actual the actual display you know with everybody's parents around watching uh it started to seizure itself to death and just shook itself apart and did not move nice so it just completely broke down when it was time to actually show it off and i think there were tears i i was gonna say like adult me would just laugh at my own creation flying apart but as a (laughs) child like i'd probably yeah i'd cry yeah we were like we were like 14 15 put your life into that robot yeah there was there was a lot that was weeks that was weeks of like designing and testing and reworking that, those things and then making sure that they worked right up until the end. And then right at the end, it just destroys itself by trying to move. <laughs> I felt way better about mine because it just didn't work from the beginning. So yeah, I, I knew you it was can't be, be disappointed. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a piece of shit from the, from the moment we first put it together. I was like, this thing is not going to work. Oh, hey, it doesn't work. All right, let's try and fix it and see if it works. Still doesn't work. Well, it's time. I wonder if it'll work. Yeah, it doesn't work. My worst idea for high school project: water bagpipe. We had to make a musical instrument. Wait a minute. Rem- remind me, refresh my memory about this. Um, I think it had like either two bags or a bag and a bottle, and like you would squeeze the amount of water to like create enough space for different frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> did it? Did it produce sound? It produced sound, but it leaked too much. <laughs> it's a very messy <laughs> instrument. <laughs> And in a state like California, stricken by drought, a very costly instrument. Yeah. It never caught on. In a... Oh, shit. No, it was doomed to fail. Shit, dude. You know what? We should get some recordings of... of the... Do you still know how to make it? Let's build one and get some recordings for your music. I, I could figure out how to make it again. I don't really want to, though. <laughs> just just for one. Just for one one album. Making, we'll a, making water my pipes. own guitar would be really cool. Like, I could probably do that at some point. Yeah. I've already done like the wiring numerous times, and I I just repaired my guitar recently too with the headstock that snapped off. Yeah, I'm just saying, uh, a che- just one cheap Windows album featuring water bagpipes would be pretty dope. <laughs> That's like a unique sound. Nobody plays that instrument. You have That's this. True. It's a weapon at your disposal to crush all other music. You can you can give a new sound to music. Do you know how rare that is now? <laughs> Everything's been done except water bagpipes. He's right. Yeah. Everyone's online. I mean, you market saturation. Yeah. You got a yeah, yell. Every guitar riff's been written. Yeah. In a room with everyone shouting, the one person who gets your attention is the one who's whispering. And by whispering, I mean playing some sweet water bagpipes. <laughs> there are, are a lot of buskers in Boston. Like, you know, just, just people on the street, like, playing playing music or some shit uh you know when you go to faneuil hall which is kind of like a kind of like an outdoor mall with a big food with a huge fucking food court there's people busking there and like you're actually not allowed to just show up with an overturned hat and start playing music or they'll kick you out you have to audition to be a busker at faneuil hall and get approved you can't make them look bad you got to be like yeah you got to bring your fucking a game to faneuil hall but then there's people like on the you know in the surrounding blocks just playing on the street because they can and it's close to faneuil hall so it's kind of the same of course like there's a get lot. people to spend their tip money before they get to Nathaniel Hall. Yeah, steal their business before they, before it gets there. But uh, like there were like three or four different guys who played bagpipes, mm-hmm. who all hung out within like the same three or four square miles. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be? Is there like a kind of an overlapping point where you could hear like multiple of those players at the same time, and that would be the perfect nexus at, to like leave this earth leave this mortal coil yeah there was there was overlap if you uh if you were out on the right day at the right time if you stood like on the greenway outside the uh outside the marriott at long wharf i'm giving people directions so they can actually try this now uh the cursed yeah. alignment yeah it just it just happens at like certain times of day on certain days but you will be able to hear like two or three guys playing bagpipes from all different directions over the screeching traffic and the tour buses when I was in uh, Madrid in 2009, there was a guy uh, playing wine glasses as seamlessly as a piano. It was awesome. Awesome. Mm. Lots of street performers in Madrid. Yeah. Weird thing about Boston that I noticed, aside from all the buskers, is no public drinking fountains. Like, almost no drinking fountains, period. Like, even in, like, malls and stuff. 
Like I, I walked, I walked like same thing in Europe. In Europe, I walked a lot of Boston, and I saw maybe one, two outdoor drinking fountains in parks, and they were quite far apart. They were like five miles apart, and like I walked over a shit ton of Boston, and I only saw those two drinking fountains outside, and I saw like maybe three or four indoors, like in malls and stuff. I, I don't understand. I don't understand how everybody like stays hydrated in Boston. Busking, busking, yeah. But that's that's very dehydrating work, especially if you sing or play a wind instrument. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, you, and then you make money to buy water, but like, so you can keep singing. It's yeah, just a it's just endless an endless cycle. cycle. We're all trapped in capitalism. Even the buskers who seem free. Even though, um, like, water actually overtook soda as the most popular beverage in the U.S. Wow, like, really? <laughs> yeah. Water's back on top? Water's back on top. Woo! But there zero, still are those people who only drink soda. Yeah, like my eighth grade math teacher. Yeah. Yeah, she only drinks Diet Pepsi. Like, She's... exclusively. She hates water. You got to learn to love it, man. Water's back on the menu, boys. Water is life, baby. Have you heard Dago Dave? No, he's a a local MC who uh has, has, he's got a hit song by that na- by that name. Water is life. Oh yeah. That, uh, is it, m- isn't isn't that isn't the first part of his name a slur against Italians? Is it? Yeah. D a y g o. I only know, know Dago as it's like a, a nickname for San Diego. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And it's dumb. I'm gonna I, put that spell, out there spelled, right now. Spelled that way. I've actually never heard that before. Is that like our version of Frisco, where people say that and we're just like, don't call it that. It's, it's mostly a thing with rappers from San Diego. Uh, it's, it's like Frisco, but the opposite. It's like only people from San Diego use it, whereas you go to Frisco and you say Frisco, and they're like, you're not from here. No, stop it. So like, so it's just us saying it, but also we hate it. I, you'll never catch me unironically using that word. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put that. Quiet Nick is an MC in San Diego for any of y'all who don't know. I'm going to put it out here right now to the other MCs in San Diego. That word is fucking dumb. Stop. <laughs> Dago. Wow, throw it, a Dago, throwing down of the gun. Throwing shade. <laughs> Tossing the salt. That's all. Vitriol's done. <laughs> I, I love San Diego's hip hop scene. I, I I love all you artists. Just that word. That's all. I love San Diego. I miss this place. Also, no fast food options in Boston. There there is fast food, but it's just it's just McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts, and that is it. Mm. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, but is like, there like kind of in between food, or is it just like restaurants and McDonald's? Like are the gastro pubs? I I would assume so. I never went to one. Like there are, there are places where you can get your food to go, but it's not like fat. It's not like fast food. There's there's no places with drive throughs or anything like that, or just like really like just really standard standard fast food. It's just McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts, and like I I talked to one of the guys who is from Boston. He was just like. Yeah, I want to go out to the West Coast just so I can like try other fast food. I've never tried anything else. I've never been outside Boston. I was like, huh? Yeah, you should try In and Out. I'm and I'm being that Southern California dude at that point. I'm just like, yeah, try In and Out. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, dude. If you go to In and Out while extremely drunk, it is the best. And all the 24 hour Mexican food here. Oh yeah, yes. 24 hour Mexican. Yeah, I told him about that, and he was just like, ah. Oh. The only Mexican place around here closes at nine. <laughs> it's like when you talk to people from other states and they're like, but I've had a burrito f- before. And it's like, no, no, you haven't. no, your mouth lied to you. You ate a wrap. You the ate person, a wrap that was called a burrito. The people who made it might have thought that it was a burrito and they they might have felt it in their soul that it was a burrito, but it wasn't. It, it was a it, it was you ate, you ate a wrap. It's a different kind of burrito, but it's not. Yeah not a burrito out it's, here it's, it's the idea of a burrito <laughs> theoretical burrito it's it's the lacroix of burritos i'm uncultured what does that mean it's like lacroix is is, is it's are, are, are people light flavor are people pronouncing it lacroix or lacroix i say lacroix it's not like the really flavored soda LaCroix water it's pre- like the soda French water with that faint hint but it's, something. Yeah, it's, it's the soda water that somebody was really thinking really hard about lemons when they made it and you can just kind of taste that that intention. One's called uh, pamplemousse, which is grapefruit flavor. Then why not just call it grapefruit flavor? What the fuck's a pamplemousse? People don't like Nobody grapefruit. Knows. You have to trick them. You have to really. You have I like to grapefruit. Trick them into liking the flavor. I tricked my mom into liking. I like grapefruit. grapefruit. It's bitter. 
I'm tart. I yes, like it. It's terrible. <laughs> I love it. I'm addicted to Topo Chico. Topo Chico. What is that? Another soda water um, from Monterey, Mexico. There's only a few places locally to get it. It's more common in LA and Texas. Yeah. Um, but they have like a standard like mineral water and then um, they have a grapefruit flavor and a lime flavor. All of them are really good. There, there was a 7-Eleven down the street that sold the flavored ones and then I went to Barrio Logan for the glass bottles. And I drank like 24 of those in a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah Thank stuff. you, Barrio Logan. Thank you, Barrio Logan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when people are talking about like, oh, yeah, I've never been to the I've never been to the West Coast. Where should I go to get Mexico? I'm just like, okay, go to San Diego. Go to a place called Barrio Logan and throw a rock. Follow the rock. You, it probably hit a good Mexican place. Yeah. And th- there's going to be, not even A, there's going to be like between five and ten decent Mexican places in all neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah even Cotijan would everywhere. be leaps and bounds better than what's in Boston. Yeah. Dude, fucking Roberto's would be better. Yeah. I do mm. I do like some Roberto's. Yesenia's. We've we've given shout outs to Yesenia's before, but dude, god Yesenia's, damn. please sponsor us. That fucking carne asada. Don't know how they do it. It's good. And also all the cooks are different. So even the chains, like you might go to one. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, there's a Rober- there's one Roberto's one that's stop. better than another Roberto's. I know oh, this yeah. in this neighborhood. They yeah, have Roberto's one better one, than the other. One, yeah, it's, it's like the Denny's. It's like there's two Denny's, and you're like, ah, oh, let's go to the good one. <laughs> no, these guys have their salsa recipes, and they do not share, and they will compete. And if it comes to it, shops. they will fight each other. I actually at my last job, uh, my chef was innocently asking one of our other. We would use a. Uh, one of our cooks, he had his own recipe that the restaurant adopted, but only he was allowed to make it. <laughs> and one of the chefs was oh, just, chef drama. I think, the I think, secret dies with me. Yeah. So he wasn't even like he wasn't. He was just a regular line cook, but he just made such good salsa that the restaurant was like, "Hey, if we let you, if if you make it, can we use that?" And he's like, "Yes." Uh, but chef is just kind of innocently asking about the recipe not even direct questions and then out come the knives oh he, he got like visibly like turns away from the counter and fa- <laughs> faces chef like i'm not gonna tell you i'm not going to tell you how ever. i make my roja ever <laughs> i was hoping there'd be more violence no violence no he would never use violence to solve a problem unless you tried to steal the secret recipe to his salsa roja <sighs> You I was I was hoping that. that would happen so I could you get some that. action in the story. You could have been his plankton. <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. A secret recipe. Try to steal his recipe. Hey hey come on man you can do it. You went to college. It's plankton. It's plankton in in the Krabby Patties. Actually it's crab in the Krabby Patties and that's why he's the only crab. <laughs> in of course. <gasps> Makes so much sense according to a post I saw on the internet. Yeah. But it I, makes sense. Like, Mr. Mr. Krabs is a dirty capitalist. I'm sure he. I'm sure he's not above that. Eliminate the competition. Yeah. Remove the other crabs. There's also a post on the internet that says Angelica from Rugrats imagined all the other kids. Boo! That makes me sad. Boo! I hate these That's theories where everything's made depressing. up. Everything is yeah, me too. Everything's somebody hallucinating or in a coma ward and dreaming Ooh. or something. Uh, boo! I hate them. Y- you'll hate this one. Uh, Ooh, great! <laughs> the Matrix. It was completely successful. If they can simulate such a detailed world of you know, like a New York cityscape, the, I mean, think about the real world. The color palette is way more simple. There's less NPCs mm-hmm. going on. Like the whole world outside the Matrix. There's, there's a less. There's a less diverse, yeah. you know, shorter render distance. Yeah. There's, a, yeah, everything's pipes. There's a less, you know, diverse environment. There's less assets to render. Yeah, I mean, if they can mirror that, they, they can, can use the exact same that. model for those octopus robots every single time. Yeah, I mean, it'd be so much easier than yeah. making independent character models yeah. for I have, I have every heard, human. I have so heard the theory that Zion is in the Matrix. It they, just they worked. Were, they were in the Matrix the whole time. And this is this whole prophecy is just like a cycle that they use to keep them busy and, and not figuring out that they're Debugging. still in the matrix. Yeah, and, and, not, and yeah, it's just burning out all their energy, thinking that they've gotten themselves free, which is honestly like a super dark read, and I like it. Yeah, and no one ever woke up, and it was, it was great, and uh, the machines just continued. Yeah, I mean that one. That one's a little different yeah. from the from the standard like coma dream or or you know mental hospital theory that I hate. At least it's like <gasps> it fits in with like what's been established and it 
creates a twist. It, it creates an actual. You're right. Twist. The, the whole plot twist of like, nope, none of it was real. The end. Yeah. I as hate opposed, that. as opposed to like, it was all yeah, a dream. The entire, the entire point of the Matrix is that it starts with twist ending. None of it was real, and then or is what? It? What happens after that? And then like they get out of it. So like, what if the twist then is, oh yeah, you thought that you had gotten out of the illusion, but you're still in the illusion, and it makes that ending super dark. It cha- it changes the nature of the entire story and makes it just a really dark downer ending, which I like as opposed to just like, Oh, they, they, they were made. It's, it's weird. So that it just has to be made up when he's dying of dying of a car accident. And this is, this is what he's imagining as he's dying. It's like, fuck that. It's boring and dumb. I've heard theories like that for adventure time. Cause people can't just have things be fun and wacky and cool. It has to be like the dream of a kid who's dying with his dog curled up in his lap in the hospital. And adventure time no. already has dark parts. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so why do you have to undermine it with this bullshit? I we, just hate these theories. We are adults. We need to project our baggage that we've accumulated onto these children's cartoons. We need to take the kids' shows away from the kids. They're take our it back. Shows. That's what fandom is all about. Steven Universe 2018. <laughs> these kids have no experience. They can't relate. <laughs> you guys ever think about the fact that like adults just kind of suck? Yeah, especially now that we are adults, we're just like, oh, we, we as a we as a group just kind of suck. Yeah, we take the fun out of cartoons. It you when we when our parents did it, it was just because like they weren't they would tell us not to watch cartoons or like they would watch it with us and then just make fun of it and then we'd feel bad about liking it. But like we take fun out of cartoons by liking them even more than the kids. Junebug, new call Junebug. There's a Junebug. It's hot. We're leaving. We're leaving the door open. I could close the screen door, but it doesn't really work that well. It's hard no, to... it's all good. Now we're having more fun with this June yeah. bug. But if it flies in my head, I'm pulling the gun out. You're, I don't, I don't you're own armed. a gun. I don't own a firearm. Do you ever have one of those, uh, one, of those one of those salt guns that people use to kill flies? Salt guns? Yeah. They're called like bug assault or something. And it's like, it's a pun because like, uh, uh, <laughs> a hyphen S A L T. Those like electrified tennis rackets. No. Yeah. Yeah. We had one of those on the boat because, you know, in the Bahamas, there are mosquitoes that can just pick you up and carry you away. But like we had all kinds of bugs. We had one of those in the con mainly just for the captain to use while he's steering the ship and just flail the electric tennis racket around and kill bugs. But, uh, we also had one of these salt guns and it's like, it looks like a fucking Nerf gun, like all yellow and orange and everything, and it has like the pump action. And then like you just fill it up with table salt, and then you shoot it, and a big puff of table salt goes out like a shotgun blast and just hits flies, and then it kills them. I mean, I can imagine salt crystals just ripping their wings apart. Yeah, or something. yeah that's, that's like, basically that that's sounds, basically what happens. If I were a bug, that's actually pretty rough. Yeah. That's, uh... Salt in all the wounds, too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, if you have complex enough nerves to feel that, then that's going to be a shitty way to die, which I guess since you're a bug, probably not, but still, ow. And I mean, when you're that big, a grain of salt is like having a rock lodged in your chest. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds really good. I need to get something like that because we have wasps oh, all yeah. over my house. I believe and it works on wasps. Yeah, I just, I'll kill all of them. They serve no purpose. I just get out of, get out of here. In wasps. Big Bear, I saw um, an ant carrying a leaf 20 times the size. Fuck yeah. Power ants. Ants are strong. Uh, the biomass of ants outweighs humans. So like an ant that was roughly the size of a human would just just be heavy as all shit. Well, I'm saying all the ants in the world, they weigh more than all the humans in the world. Oh, okay. All right. I thought you meant like like the mass of an ant's body is more like, you know, to scale than a human. It's probably that too. Yeah. But the former was the fact that I knew. So goddamn, how, who new facts? Who got who estimated how many ants there are? Because you know you can't count all of them, just like going around. So how how did they estimate how I, many? ants I guess there were? you take like a sample size on each continent, uh, other than in Antarctica, if you can, and then from there, like, are there no ants? Are there are there no ants in Antarctica? They're sleeping. It's it's the I one. I mean, there's parts of Antarctica with land, so there could be. I, I just mean, don't know if they've reached there. I mean, it's the one part of the world with ant in its name. I really just want them to be there for that reason alone. That, yeah. What if that's where they're all the from? Oh, that's yeah. Where they're all from, and they were exiled from there because they, <laughs> <laughs> they brought the cold. They brought. They. 
that was actually a cataclysm from their technology. Yeah. They created the cold storm and they had to flee oh, yeah, we're, their homeland. We're living, we're living in the ant post-apocalypse. We have been for centuries now. You know, <laughs> none of us knew about this. But ants had an extremely advanced society, and then through you know sociological issues and you know over overworking the environment, they just completely destroyed their own civilization, and it broke down, and the Antarctic froze. And that tech's all banned, they, and then they can't. Yeah, and then they had to they had to become wandering nomads. They taught the Egyptians how to do everything. Yeah, we're living in we're living in a you know in Moving a long those blocks. Yeah. We're living in Mad Max times for the ants, <laughs> where they're all living under the ground. And they don't want to live in hills, eating eating leftovers and hauling leaves. They they once you know they once had a space program, dude. Yeah, and it was so easy to get ships up there because they were really tiny. And now we're just fighting. They over want water. the Nintendo Switch. They want to play. They want the <laughs> Nintendo Switch. I'm wondering, like it's been thousands of generations of ants. I'm wondering if if the technological prowess is still there or if it's been lost. That, I mean, there could be. I mean, specific lineages, because, I mean, if it's banned, right? Because, I mean, if it fell in the wrong hands, they already screwed up a whole continent, and they're tiny. Yeah, so. and I mean, like, ants can't really pass down knowledge all that reliably. They don't have, they don't record things. It's all, they use entirely oral tradition. It's true. They can pass things on, chemical information along. So, I mean, as long as, like, a, a line doesn't, like, like, as long as nobody, like, Like, parents don't die without passing it on to, like, their children. Like, yeah. as long as, like, oh, I, d- I never knew my parents because I'm... If there's, like... It's as okay. As as Have some hand, of your father's goo. Yeah. Take um, it and learn. We'll reconstitute your father's body into nutrients. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why they were so advanced. Yeah, but, I mean, you they had to you, keep you it think, banned, You think so. he's just started doing this because of nature? No, they. this is all careful genetic engineering by their by their forefathers. And so now, I mean, because that's obviously, I mean, it's a pretty dangerous technology. I'm banging on the table, yeah. podcast no no. Oh yeah, um, yeah. One one. Um, yeah, one of the issues with ant society way back when was that they went all soil and green, and then there were riots, and then there was you know the market destabilized, and there was an economic collapse, and then things just totally fell apart for the ants. So like part of that was just that technology. They all they all soil and greened each other. Got to Got to keep it secret. So now I now that's what I think now there's kind of these clans or lineages that just pass it on through generations and uh, they know how to harness that technology but but do they know how to build it they, and, know, they know how to use it but can they build it they know they, they I think they just know they can't force that change on like ant culture they know like ants have to kind of change of their own will as a society before they can kind of bring that technology out again yeah all right they so, can't legislate it you know so we have Ants living underground with their extremely advanced technology, getting ready to take back the world. Uh, somebody get Hasbro on the horn because we just invented toys with lore. Oh, we're bringing man. that trend back, early two thousand style. I need a I need a napkin to write toys with lore something on. We'll name all the ants and give them f- fun, quirky personalities. You got like different ant nationalities. Oh, they got yeah. like uh, heraldry, let's, yeah, and their own. And we got to come up with names for all this stuff. So let's uh. Let's just crack open like a, like a let's see like a like a Celtic to English dictionary and just start taking words out of it. Yeah, let's appropriate let's appropriate like English. Yeah, like just old old Celtic. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm with it. Yeah, Ga- Gaelic ants, Cornish ants, million dollar toy idea. Yeah, we got this, man. I mean, hey, is anyone familiar with Redwall? Yeah, if Brian Shaw can make a career writing about just, just the medieval kingdoms of woodland mammals, um, <laughs> and it was awesome. It was it. awesome. I, I I still have I, all of them. I think. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, like it, it was kind of in the vein of Redwall. But did you ever read Mouse Guard? I I never read Mouse Guard. I saw the book for like I think Mouse Guard has like a like a tabletop RPG now. Oh, yeah. Which, yeah, but like Mouse Guard is a comic. I've read a couple volumes of it. It's it's also good. It's it's just kind of in the same vein as Redwall. Yeah, it looks. I think I I think I'm gonna check it out because I just need more visuals. Yeah, need. yeah, and you you'll you'll get that. It's a It'd it's a comic. It's a, a comic and everything. Yeah, dude, Redwall's fucking awesome. Man. Shout out Redwall. Nobody knows what that is anymore. Shout out Brian, Jacques. Yeah, yeah, Brian Jacques. 
<laughs> I heard that was supposed to be a movie a while ago, but they, they you know what? Did, I hope they don't. They actually did make a Tale of Despero movie, and it was oh yeah, it was. That's a really random one to just like. Let's make that one. Yeah, let's just make let's just make that one. And it was just it was just a very, a very low quality, low budget animated movie. It was trying to be like a like a Disney animated movie for kids. It was CG animation, 3D animation, and it was really bad. And like it was just like a totally totally standard rinse and repeat heroes heroes journey kind of joint. Well, that's they shouldn't have animated it. They should have gotten actual mice and exactly, like, tied yes. little like armor suits to them yeah. and done a live action red wall. Exactly. Like uh, that's how I would have done it. That's how I that's how I know everybody who's read Red live Wall once actors. it done. Why would you get a human to voice act an animated mouse when you could you just get, cast you, you train a mouse. a mouse to talk. Train a mouse to talk. It's not that hard. I've done it. And Our, I don't have a mouse. The mouse died, but you know, I I taught a mouse to talk. I could probably do it again, but I'd need a mouse. Art but, house cinema. Yeah. But I think I think when you're a fan of like a book or something like that, you have like you have ideas for how you how you want the movie to be done that are like just totally not something that Hollywood would ever go for. Like Like not bad. Yeah. Like just just stuff that like you're like, oh, this would be awesome and they're like, No, we're just gonna we're just gonna do it this way because it, it we've done this a million times before and we know that's gonna make money. We don't know about this thing. It's so, like I always wanted, like, I read the book World War Z years and years ago. Oh, and I, man. I always wanted a movie of that that's, like, an eight-hour Ken Burns-style documentary. Or, yeah. like, a series or something. Yeah, but, like, it's it's just, like, a laborious watch. Just, like, painfully dry. You can spice it up with, like, you know, like, found footage and, like, actual, like, camera recordings of the interviews. But, like, mostly it's just all Ken Burns-style. Just yeah. a you, dry. You get, yeah, you, yeah, just a dry recounting of events, but with zombies. And like you can you can again you can spice it up with like found footage of like you know first person of like the event that's happening. But no dude, let's have named characters in an action plot. Yeah, and in a fucking, book that doesn't have any of those things. Brad Pitt and like let's just take three things from the book that we think are cool and then just put Brad Pitt in those. Yeah, I just want a painfully slow documentary of World War Z, <laughs> but I know nobody's ever going to make that movie. Cause oh, dude, we fucking stupid. Oh, that that movie could be made for like almost no budget. Yeah, like 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 so little. I'm really tired of zombies, but maybe I will very slowly work on like I like how it's all broken up in different you know case files and yeah. whatnot. So maybe yeah. just and like it's it's all just one like case events at a time. throughout this like ten year period. Yeah, they're all just broken up into, like their own stories. One case at a time. Maybe I can do a little bit of like yeah. I remember the audiobook. The audiobook for World War Z was really cool because they got like different voice actors for each each ah. character telling their story, and then they had like the voice of the interviewer, who was like the one constant throughout the whole thing. But like every every chapter was narrated by like a different a different actor reading for the character. That was fucking cool. I bet all those people made like no money. Oh being yeah, in the no. Bo- being in the no. booth for like you know fifteen minutes. Yeah, I mean you're reading you're reading like a chapter of a book. Like I think I think in World War Z they might have come back to the same people once or twice. So maybe you're reading like two or three chapters. Each but, person has like three or four voices. Yeah. Oh yeah, you just divvy it up so like everybody's doing everybody's doing like two or three characters. Yeah. I think I think they got one person for each, which is like a production. I shrug. He shrugged off camera. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you could you could make the kind of World War Z movie that I want to see for very little money. Like so you should make it. Yeah. Twenty dollars an episode. Yeah. This is not counting like mix down and everything afterwards, but filming, shoot the shoot yeah. is like Yeah, it's dirt it's, cheap. It would mostly just be like one guy talking into a camera and then you would have to fake some B roll and maybe some pound footage and that's it. <laughs> really shaky so you know you don't have to use a lot of makeup yeah yeah exactly or like from long distances grainy Gra- like grainy big, crypt, cryptid big, footage bigfoot style filmed entirely on super 8 <laughs> for some reason <laughs> yeah i'll just stand just straight up eight millimeter hey we, we should really get uh the tortoise on here on the show oh yeah first we gotta name him though <laughs> yeah i don't want to wake him up yeah, he's, he's, I mean, he's he doesn't napping. have to join, you know, impromptu. But I mean, if you want to call, you know, contact his team 
And uh, yeah, I'll speak to his agent. Yeah, see what's up. his see peop- his people will call our people. Our people will call his people. Round and round until we get him on. And, uh, yeah. For listeners who don't know, uh, Jack and I personally, uh, we found a desert tortoise in our, the alley behind our house. He's like two feet long. Yeah, and we took him in. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. I like him. I haven't met him yet, but he's I've heard of great things. Yeah. He can move pretty quick for a tortoise yeah. when he wants to. He's spry, but he sleeps a lot during the day. He probably wakes up at like 2 a.m. Yeah. Just to mm-hmm. hang out when it's cool. Go get a cold salad. Yeah. Maybe go look for another tortoise to hang out with. There's another tortoise around here somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, he just wandered around. I'm sure there's another tortoise out there doing the exact same thing. I like to believe that he broke out of the zoo like six years ago, and he just now made it this far. <laughs> it's been it's been a straight line, but it's been he's taking his time. Every once in a while, he gets picked up and becomes somebody's pet for a little while, and then he's gone again. That's yeah, I think I think tortoises just bounce between multiple houses over their like sixty to eighty years. I wish because I, they yeah. are escape artists and. From uh, what I heard from a neighbor who used to own tortoises, after a few years, people are like okay with them being gone. I guess. Yeah, because they're they're just nomads. They're they're the weird guy who lives in an RV, except they live like their their RV is around them. Yeah, yeah. I wish I wish tortoises came with like a like a like a library like log card. Like when you check a book out of a library, it has the card that like lets you know who's checked it out before you and how long and like when they got it out and when they returned it. So like just a, just a time card for for like when the tortoise was with who, and like leave in like what his name was at the time. Yeah, if uh, if they're if they're registered with uh, like the state of California, they'll have a tag on like the underside of their shell, which I haven't checked for yet, but I really should in case there is like an owner that's looking for it. Um, that's that's like the closest thing to it, I guess. No, I just want like like a slot right under his neck, and you just reach in and pull out bin. this little paper slip. It says, like, oh, okay, so this is where he was before. Oh, and this is what his name was. Oh, and this is what his name was before that. He's been to, like, eight different houses over the years. This first one is from, like, 1983. <laughs> imagine, imagine a tortoise to run away and then its original owners pass away or move on. And then the new people find it. And then it's right back. And it's like, oh, I've been here before. Who are you guys? Okay, now I just feel like that's like a weirdly depressing short film. You're right. That's a short... Oh, God, man. It's like the tortoise is like us when we leave our home Mm -hmm. and come back and things are just never going to be the same. I mean, tortoise comes back and they're gone, man. You had to treasure them before you moved. Guys, I think we need need to make this short film. We have a tortoise. It's so deep. We have an idea. We have the will. I mean, we probably don't have the will, but we have the other three things. I can't brush my teeth every day. I'm not, I'm not going to make a movie. <laughs> I was I, I was hoping you just said that as a non sequitur. Just like, I don't brush my teeth every day. <laughs> anyway, next subject. <laughs> I don't leave my, I don't have to leave my house every day, so, you know. Yeah, but it's still your mouth that you got to you, you <laughs> It's my mouth at the end of the you day. You got to live with it inside you every day. You're yeah, the one who's got to live with it. Yeah, I don't want to. I got to. <laughs> so who's our uh, dental care sponsor? On uh, this season is is it New Smile Dental? Because that's where we go. Yeah, New Smile Dental. <laughs> yeah, in Curdy Mesa. I do. All Did of it... our sponsors are unofficial sponsors. They're just places that we go and you know give our patronage to. I didn't even think about. It. You do have to kind of announce that someone's not actually your sponsor, don't you? Yeah, we we do have to clarify. We've never had an actual sponsor ever. We've yeah. even done a bit where we uh, were, sorry about that, guys. Where we were sponsored by Blue Apron or whatever, or, or Nature Do- Box, or Dollar Shave, or Meandies, Casper Mattress, <laughs> all the common podcast sponsors. Yeah, design your website at Squarespace today. Squarespace. And this episode is brought to you by Skillshare. No, it's it's not. None of these are true. <laughs> they did not give us money. Subscribe to Crunchyroll. Brought, brought to you by TaskRabbit. TaskRabbit. What the fuck is TaskRabbit? I don't you know. You do stuff for five bucks. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember now. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's uh, like, I think you could, like, hire somebody to, like, mow your lawn on there or clean your bathroom or just do, like, little things. Huh. I'm going on there because I'm unemployed right now and I need money. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, with my like online money making, I found two apps 
that I, that I downloaded, but I haven't like actually tried to make money on their stringer, which is on uh, news outlets will send out, hey, we need cell phone video of this thing near you. We'll pay you eighty bucks. Of like, is it like live, like like unfolding events, or is it just like they like, need some cell phone like? B-roll like of a crime kinda. scene or a fire or some other oh, like thing that would go on the news. That is but total. But they don't want to pay the full price of a real stringer. So you're gonna yeah. you're gonna you're gonna go all nightcrawler. <laughs> I was gonna say I was like that totally sounds like uh, interning to be a nightcrawler. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go overboard like he does. If you want to win the lottery, you got to make the money to buy the ticket. <laughs> and then there's proxy picks, which is. Um, just taking photos for three twenty five if something's near you. It's mostly for reg- residential stuff. Hmm. Stringer and online. proxy picks. Yeah, I'm actually going to put that in my phone because, uh, yeah, unofficially sponsored by Stringer and <laughs> proxy picks. <laughs> All unofficial sponsors. Oh yeah, New Smile Dental and Yesenias. Not we me. are not sponsored. We just like them. Maybe they'll sponsor you if we if we get video and put those smiles on the podcast. <laughs> you can't see it now, but I'm smiling into the mic, and they did a great job. <laughs> I've just got a big old smile on my face. <laughs> and uh, most importantly, wow. a new smile. A great new smile from New Smile Dental. Do they take all insurance? I don't know. <laughs> I know they take Kaiser. We're posing for a picture. <laughs> Yet another time we pose poser. for the picture on the podcast. I'm poser for a picture. You fucking poser. Oh, now I'm that dude All who's just... All people on proxy picks are posers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. Now I'm just that guy that's on his phone on the podcast. And that's every guy. That's like every some podcast people, Hey, guess. some people are really engaged. <laughs> and then you have people like Beagle from Baker Skateboards. I love you, Beagle. Who just like stared into the distance the entire time. On no jumper, it was great. <laughs> Not even like different points in the room, just like one point in the room. He was kind of just like like that to the table. for like an hour. Yeah, like talking to the table for an hour. It was really cute. I want little B to either be on no jumper or Joe Rogan's podcast. Yes. Honestly, I'd like. I'd really prefer Joe Rogan because it's for a like longer the, discussion. The setting, yeah, longer discussion, and I feel like like no jumper is about an hour and some change. Yeah, and I mean no jumper goes all over the place too, but it's still I feel like more rap directed. Yeah, whereas I don't know, Joe has this thing about talking about duck penises with a lot of people. It, <laughs> They're all hey, want some c- elk meat. I've got ninety pounds of it. <laughs> it's, it's come up in a lot of fucking protein. <laughs> <laughs> bone broth <laughs> the bone broth it's good for male Fucking vitality social justice warriors are at it again <laughs> the SJWs and the soy boys coming out for Hillary Clinton in the electric chair today <laughs> <laughs> did he Did he call for that he said he called paraphrasing by we need Hillary Clinton in the electric chair today I'm talking about Crazy. QAnon it's all there it's all QAnon we need the stenographer, though, to clarify. There's a there's a stenographer just off camera during during Alex Jones' broadcast, just taking everything down. Shit, did I really say that? <laughs> he reads it after the fact. Like once he's broken character and he's no longer Alex Jones and he's Bill Hicks again, he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh God, did I really say that?" Excuse me, Mr. Jones. Yeah, what? <laughs> All right, get out of here. Oh, my God, the things I have to say in this voice all day. Water, water, please. <laughs> all right, thank you. But also, nobody can know my secret, and then he just strangles his assistant to death, and then they bring in a new one. It's like, I don't know. What the, I don't know. She said something about Hillary. Assassination attempt. 5G death towers. <laughs> Man. <laughs> That's my favorite weird conspiracy theory, that the 5G towers are going up to replace 4G cell signal. They're radiation to kill people. Ah, they just keep... Dude, it's like, man... It's, it's, it's to turn us gay is what it is. I guarantee <laughs> It's people, like the chemicals in the water. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! <laughs> <laughs> I do love being Alex Jones. I can see why Bill Hicks does it all the time. Jack, uh, do you have a Bill Maher impression? Well... 
I would need more footage of Bill Maher to re- kind of refresh myself on what he sounds like. But I feel like this is kind of ballpark Bill Maher. Am I doing all right? I feel like I'm close. Yeah, you're close. I'm close. I'm not quite. Th- I can tell I'm not quite there. New rule. I, kn- I know what Bill Maher sounds like, and this is kind of Bill Maher light. I know I'm not quite there. I need to listen to more Bill Maher. But, yeah, that's that's more or less Bill Maher. The rest of the podcast is just you cycling through every impression you know how I do. God, let's do right, that. We've got to go through nighttime talk. <laughs> Uh, I kind of I kind of wore out my voice on Alex Jones. That burns you up fast. How does he do it? I don't know. He eats a I mean, he eats a big bowl of chili for lunch every day. That's that's how he his his throat is basically just leather at this point. He needs to do this for hours. And listen listen to Alex Jones's voice from like five years ago. It is so much different than what it is now. I will check it out. He's been getting really. What if he's kind of like L. Ron Hubbard, where like it wasn't super serious at first, but then the people around him took it seriously, and then it started kind of started to get to him, and even he started to take his own product a little too seriously, and now and, it's yeah, just kind of trapped. In court, he gave the defense of, "Oh, this is all just a character; it's all an act." But I'm sure he like lost himself in it too. Even if, yeah, even well, if he lost he lost his vocal cords in it. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> but he's also making a shit ton of money. So like someone's he buying found, that he, bone broth. He found a way to like make a living off of performance Somebody's art. Buying those bug out bags. Yeah, dude. If Bill, if if he's if he's not really Alex Jones, the guy all the time, then like he actually found a way to make a sustainable living, like make real money off of performance art. How the fuck do you do that? You be Alex Jones, I guess. But wow, good for him. Always good to see an artist, you know, succeed. Alex Jones, the new Marina Abramovich. <laughs> imagine, it, imagine if it was all set up for like when he was a lot older in his life to write a book, just making fun of like all the people who believed him. Yeah, like pretty much him being just like, I can't believe I got you, I got you, <laughs> just got gotcha. you. And it's just old, old, old Alex Jones just pointing and laughing from the <laughs> from the cover of the book. It's like ha 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 ha. But that boy's voice is all like this. It's just like, it was all a psyop. Oh, it was all a psyop. It was all part. Of, it was all part of QAnon. <laughs> oh, I my. was working for DARPA all along. Oh my God, you people believe me about QAnon? That's unbelievable. Trump was on my fucking show. He talked about how great I was. Oh my God, how could he fall for this? And you suckers fell for PizzaGate too. Fucking <laughs> PizzaGate. Yeah, there's pedophiles being, you know. Peddling kids in a in the basement of a pizza place that doesn't even have a basement. Let's go shoot it up. Oh my god, you people are ridiculous. The weirdest part of that the whole thing was just like, who's talking about their pizza over email? Like, what decade is yeah. this? Who talks about their pizza? Just like, like, I had a great cheese pizza. Yeah. At unless this place in, unless the you're other day, unless like, you're making plans to get pizza, you should yeah, not be it, talking about pizza. I saw yeah, some were, ad that you could order like I think Domino's pizza just off of emojis. That's actually Fuck really you. cool for like people in between languages, but like, are they going to know those emojis? Yeah, that that's that's an interesting. It doesn't really seem like a thing with practical application. It sounds like it, it has the idea of being a practical application, but I don't really. It just seems, it just seems like a really like a Black Mirror episode where they were just like, nah, let's 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 drop this one. The pizza starts killing people. <laughs> It was it was less Black Mirror and more Goosebumps, so they decided to cut it. <laughs> and wasn't it like Domino's filling potholes too? Yeah, that's dystopian as fuck. In a couple of years, Domino's is just gonna own a city. They're gonna own. It's gonna be Domino's presents Baltimore. Wait, what's this about filling potholes? Yeah. So Domino's decided to make a big a big PR thing of like, oh yeah, tell us if there are potholes nearby, and then we'll just fill in potholes because the government won't do it for you. And then we, and then they sprayed their logo over the over the patch that they would do, and it's all just very like, okay, so we have enough money to fix your potholes if your county won't do it. Yeah, which sounds great on its face, but then you stop and think about it, and it's like, you know, rich people and corporations have been, you know, completely eroding public works for decades, and then now they're benevolently swooping in and fixing things for us and conveniently spraying their logo on it. It just seems kind of dystopian. 
Like you ever seen You're Robocop? Right. Robocop three. Soon we're gonna be living in Robocop three, where corporations own cities and they're privately run cities and prisons. We already have private prisons, so we're already like two thirds of the way there. Minority Report was brought to life. There's this company, uh, Palantir, that does predictive policing um, with LAPD. They like have the officers go to certain areas where crimes will happen. Uh, of all the sci-fi things to make real, why can't we just do Star Trek? It works out better. There's socialism and space travel. Everything's neat. Why does it always have to be the dystopian ones? It's the phasers, stun. Yeah, you have you a, can just stun. Yeah, yeah, just give just give police officers stun. It if it were it's a thing that perfectly incapacitates everyone. Just use that. That, that's such a like magic like technology that will never yeah, exist. Tasers just like a perfect like phaser stun. I I I've never seen an episode of Star Trek where a, where a stun shot from a phaser gave somebody a heart attack. Taser or phaser? Which one are you? Phaser. Seems phaser. Like, seems way better. Yeah. Yeah, you can just like wave a tricorder over somebody and their kidney grows back for free. They didn't like just charge oh, people for that's it. That's already a thing. Yeah. Wait, what? We just can't use what they Oh yeah, it's it's definitely yeah. already a thing for yeah. for like rich people. Yeah. Rich people can just they have live. have the tricorders regrow their kidneys. Yeah, the people living in orbit. Yeah, like deep underground. Yeah, Richard Richard Branson is on his like ninth kidney at this point. Cool future thing is um, meat is being grown in a lab, and the the price will eventually go down to where we don't need to like kill animals for meat. Cool. Yes. Yeah. So like everybody could be vegan. Yeah. Yeah, technically. But that'll never be approved because then all those jobs in the meat industry would go away and no one Then they would just start cloning beef. All those jobs would go over to beef cloning. Ideally, but like... Yeah, I think there would so- still be some sort of menial labor, labor involved in that. And there would still be like shipping and transporting it. Okay, have, have either of you guys ever read a comic series called Transmetropolitan? No. No. All right, it's, it's just like about like a binge drinking alcoholic journalist who lives in like a dystopian future and like like everything is like very it's all very corporate like it's not like you know 1984 it's just like everything is everything is owned and copyrighted and nobody really cares and like there's this thing where like you know the cloning of meat became such a thing that like there was no more farming and and then like now that even the staunchest vegan doesn't have an ethical like argument against eating meat now that it's all just cloned from animals that never had anything more than a brainstem. Now there's no ethical argument against ca- cannibalism, and they have these things called bastard farms that just grow human beings with no brains, so you can eat them. And there's like a fast food chain called Long Pig where you can just eat food made out of people. It's like yeah, it, yeah. Once we, I think yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, once we've gotten to that point, you can just you can just clone people with no brains, so they were never alive, and then just eat them for food. The, the, That's also already a thing. Like at, at that point, the argument against cannibalism is it'll make you sick. Like that's where mad cow disease comes from: is cows eating other cows. Same thing happens when humans eat humans. Yeah, but like, I don't know the future. The future that's presented in Transmetropolitan is like people already do horrible, horrible things to their brains. Oh, yeah. Like there's there's a thing called recreational diseases. It's never elaborated on what it is. It's mentioned as an offhand line a couple of times, but you're just like. What are that people, sounds fucked up. What are people doing to themselves? <laughs> Creational diseases. Yeah. You you get a disease from playing basketball. Yeah. Just I... just snort up just snort some hot hot super aids <laughs> and have yourself a wild weekend. You've got to try this rash. <laughs> dude, dude, have you gotten in on this hot hot syphilis action? It's amazing. Nah. It destroys your brain. You feel like Al Capone, like later years Al Capone, where he was dying and crazy. Oh, yeah. Call me Ben Franklin. (laughs) So Croatia lost. Who who are you rooting for? I didn't. No one. Yeah, I was. I was. I I didn't watch TV or, for the most part, use the internet for like two and a half months. So I am behind on all things. You know, TV shows, memes, news. I love how World, World Cup has been news. happening in like the past few weeks. Yeah, yeah, but I only came home like a week ago. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I remember hearing about it vaguely, but like, yeah, I never been really, watching it. never really knowing the whole the whole deal. I know that there was a guy who flopped really, really badly, and now we're all making fun of him, which seems fun. But that's pretty much it. Yeah, I had to have Ian get me caught up on all the memes when I came home because the shelf life of a meme at this point is like six days. Yeah, what what came out 
over the past two months. Slaps roof of car. Slaps roof of car. This bad boy can fit so much blink in it. <laughs> yeah, like the salesman slapping the roof of the car. <laughs> <laughs> and uh the is this a bird meme caught on it's been around for years but it it's got like bird. really popular a month ago <laughs> wow really so yeah huh. i think it's been around forever yeah anybody who's used tumblr has seen it already yeah. Yeah, i just my one of my favorites is like the butterflies labeled capitalism I, wait it's called human right it's just labeled human right and then the guys labeled capitalism it's just like is this a commodity <laughs> is this a commodity <laughs> I saw a really good one that was like, also, have you guys heard of anarcho capitalism? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even going to go Fuck into that. These right fucking now. I'm not even going to go in right now. Um, no hands on the wheel, only market. Only market. <laughs> no the market. Hands. The market controls everything and Forget. Domino's, Domino's fixes our roads. I don't need hands. Uh, I just need pizza. Um, no, there was a great picture of a. The first one is labeled capitalism, and it's a man stepping on a rake and smacking himself in the face. And then the second <laughs> oh, one is this. anarcho-capitalism, and it's a dude kick-flipping a rake down like a five-stair, like doing a 5 <laughs> grind, and then landing on the rake and hitting himself in the face. I think that sums it up perfectly. A, a, a rare meme that I've seen more of is um, ones involving throwing used car batteries into the ocean. <laughs> Wait, but that's not a meme. That's just litter. <laughs> what? <laughs> it makes no sense. What the fuck? Just throw a used car battery oh, over my head. Oh, you love the ocean? Name five brands of car battery you've thrown into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so... That is so it's dumb. Kind of sick, it's dumb and fucked up. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's like that's like the bath bomb meme, only like with with earth shattering implications of throwing car batteries into the open ocean. It's one car battery, so what? He said every time he threw a car battery <laughs> in the ocean. Seventy two car batteries later. Said everyone who ever threw a car battery into the ocean. <laughs> it's just one, and now there's car, and now we're stuck with car battery island. <laughs> car battery. That's right. Island. They float. I don't know how. Said every company who leaked waste in the ocean, it's just like five tons of waste. It's under the legal limit. Yeah. The ocean can take one more for the team, and then it can take one more for the team next week when we do this again, and on and on forever. I mean, if the, the plastic island in the Pacific gets any larger, we could turn it into a theme park. Yeah. You guys will all be fucked, but I can just, you know, I can just have, I can just have the tricorder regrow my lungs. So, you know, fuck off. I can have it give me some gills for when we're all underwater. That'd be great. If you live on the plastic island long enough, you might grow some. Oh, yeah. Water world. It's so coming. That's, that's how he got the gills. <laughs> by living on pla- Or maybe his parents or his grandparents lived on plastic island. That's the first that's whole. And then it was hereditary. Okay. You guys have seen water world, right? Yeah. Parts of it. I, um, I love it. And I love wh- the concept. I've never actually sat down and watched it. It is just... a beautiful train wreck. And it's, it's insanely, it, it's a famously expensive movie that bombed at the box office. And like, you can tell there's a lot of money on screen, but like, it's just such a dumb movie. Oh, uh... But like, I prefer, I prefer Kevin Costner's other post-apocalyptic movie, which he also directed. And he's like three hours long. It's called the postman. The postman. Yeah, it's oh, based off of the Neil Gaiman book, or am I getting that wrong? I don't think it was a book. I think it was just his idea. A movie, that and like, it definitely does not sound like something that was written by Neil Gaiman. But like, it's it's post apocalyptic, and like, uh, Kevin Costner is like a wanderer. He has a beard in this one, and like, you know, he, he's just a vagabond. And then he like, like while on the run from like a warlord who's played by Ed Harris. And Ed Harris is great. He's just totally hamming it up the entire time. And it's three hours. That's a lot of time to just, like, stay at, at 11. But, like, yeah, he, he while he's on the run from this guy, he stumbles across, like, a long, like, the bones of a long dead uh, mailman and takes his hat and his bag of mail and then just starts delivering mail to people that's been sitting in that bag for, like, 50 years. And then, like, he tries to bring, like, he's convincing people that the United States government is back, and it's all weirdly super patriotic and everything, but it's it's weird. And, like, so then he starts getting followers who are who also become postmen, and, like, they deliver mail, and, like, that brings back society, and Tom Petty is in it, and I think he just plays Tom Petty. 
Like it's it's never it's never stated outright, but like there's a, like when he shows up in the movie, Kevin Costner's character looks at him, is like, "I know you, you're famous." And it's like he's clearly Tom Petty. He's just like, "Nah, man, you, you are famous." Because like you know now now there's this legend of the postman. It's just like they never call him by name, but I'm pretty sure he's just supposed to be playing Tom Petty, <laughs> who's still alive in the in the apocalypse. His identical clone son. <laughs> the heartbreakers never broke up in this future. Yeah. Because the because the world ended before they got the chance, and then they had to rely on each other to get through the hard times. It's it's a watch again. I I cannot understate this. It is a three hour film that is mostly just this is Kevin no- Costner running from Ed Harris and delivering mail to people. I was gonna say this is not an exciting. This sounds like a interesting concept that I want to see, but this is not a lot for a three hour movie. There's no, not it's a lot it's not. It's very on. it's very stretched out. It's 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 a laborious watch, but like. Like there's an extended sequence like before he's like running away that he's like imprisoned by Ed Harris, like warlord Ed Harris in a in a prison camp and like he's, you know, put to work and like they make it like a long stretch of the first act. And like they like he has a mule that he's friends with. But bad things happen to the mule. Oh. Yeah. But like there there's this great scene like when he's in the labor camp and like there's a rock quarry and like everybody's like they treat people to movie night like the people who live there are, like are on the other side of the quarry and like he just gets to watch from his cage and like they're watching like an action movie like Universal Soldier or something and then everybody just gets pissed off and booing and starts throwing stuff at the screen and then they're like all right god damn it fine this is what you want this is what you want we'll play it and then they play sound of music and everybody's just like yay <laughs> <laughs> That's very depressing. Yeah. It's like, fuck, dude, we don't want an action movie. We lived through an action movie and it sucked. Now we're here and life's terrible. Let's watch Sound of Music. <laughs> For some reason, that made me think of playing the record in Shawshank Redemption, which oh, yeah. I have not seen all the way. I just saw a meme where he puts the record on in the office. And, and it's, it's Despacito? No, it's Hard in the Paint by Waka Flocka Flame. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and he's just there on the desk with his feet kicked up just... <laughs> <laughs> with Waka Flocka playing. Oh, I would also like a version of that where it's Bring Me to Life by Evanescence. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just standing. I, I love the videos that take, like, uh, moshing footage from Warp Tour and put, like, old rock songs on it, like Hall and Oates <laughs> or Phil Collins. Watch out. Or Africa. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> Watch out for her, she'll chew you up. Oh, here she comes. She's a man-eater. People are just beating the shit out of each other to man eater. <laughs> just like windmill. <laughs> oh, like some like some doo-wop era Billy Joel. <laughs> and that remind me almost in like reverse where they would take like super heavy music or it'd be it'd be like a reaction post to like usually like a metal band or like a hardcore band. You you know of a specific person who would make I think they would like repost a bunch of them, but I think they made a couple too, where it'd be like reacting to some super heavy music and it's just like a repeating loop of something from WWE or like one of those cartoonish wrestlers yeah. doing something stupid. Or like nice. there was one with uh, Hank Hill where uh, he would check out what Bobby's listening to. <laughs> and it, it would be like shoegaze or a metal band. <laughs> I, I, I always... I'm always I'm always good for like replacing the music in a movie or TV show with Africa by Toto. Yeah. It just works. Yeah, especially like just those op- that opening bit. It's like like especially with that one where it's like, what in God's name are you listening to? Do, 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 do. It's gonna take a lot to drive me away from you. I had a shipmate who absolutely hated that song, and we would just torture her with it constantly. Because, you know, we would be like repainting, repainting the ship, and we'd be painting inside the salon. It's like painting the roof and the walls and shit. And we would have a playlist going, and it was, it was our first mate who had a just killer, like, 70s, 80s playlist. And Toto was on there three times. Just so that, like, we would be sure that at least one point she was down there, it came on, and then she would storm out in a rage. And I, we, I could never get a straight answer out of her about why she hated the song. Like, the best answer I ever got out of her was, it's about nothing. I'm like, yeah, most songs are. They're just nonsense. And I love it. <laughs> 
I don't yeah. I don't understand why she had a problem with Africa, but you know, you know, to each to each their own. It was just really funny. Like and if we didn't have it playing, we would just sing it. I will say I've heard it too much. Yeah, probably in the past we, year. we all have. We all have because we've done it to ourselves, but it doesn't change the fact that it's just a terrific song. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> just a great group. Okay, when when I get older, like when I start getting gray hairs and shit, I want to go to um, I want to go to a metal show, but like totally dress as like just the most like milk toast suburban dad, like with sla- with some nice slacks and some some brown loafers and like a sweater vest over a starched collared that, shirt. That's how hardcore kids dress in 2018, actually. Yeah, yeah. but by the time Double I'm go bu- sweater. Yeah, but by the time I'm old, that will no longer be a thing. Hopefully, but I'm just gonna go there with like my pipe and like some scotch <laughs> on the rocks and just like. Hey guys, what's going on? And just like go into the mosh pit and just like walk around, like just kind of shimmy, like a dad who doesn't know how to dance but is trying his best. Like oh. totally not to the kind of music that's playing, like to Tom Jones or something. Just like just sway with my scotch and my pipe. Just like, oh, these jams take me back to the good old days. <laughs> Doing little spins, swinging with. Oh yeah. Inviting people to like dance, like slow dance with you to a song that does not warrant it at all. I'm really, I'm really excited for when these modern hardcore metal bands reach like what would be an example? Give me an old punk band that's still like doing it. That's, that's probably a good example. Yeah, I can't wait to like a lot of these modern hardcore bands, especially like the really heavy ones. If they keep going, reach like Descendants age, and then I can just be super old mm-hmm. watching like Code Orange or something and just throwing my back out. Nice. Yeah, Converge are already in their 40s. Oh, fuck. That's they're right. Gonna be, they're going to be the first ones. You go, Converge. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Converge used to be like, my favorite band for like part of high school and college. Uh, I, I can't listen to it recently, though. It doesn't mm. do the same for me. I feel I feel the same. I still really appreciate it, but like I've kind of just like I've been listening to less, not less intense music, but less music that's intense, like in that way. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, just less heavy. Even though I still like. Yeah, for for a few years, I didn't listen to like any punk or metal. Recently, I've been listening to more like straight up metal, like At the Gates and Entombed, but like. Oh. So some of the hardcore bands I used to listen to don't appeal to me anymore. I feel that. I realized all the like metal I was listening to was still really just like hardcore influenced metal and I re- I didn't realize I had like pretty much completely closed myself off to like the greater metal community as a whole. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I got t- I got tired of shredding uh halfway through high school, that's why. And then it was like hardcore metal because I was like, guitar solos are stupid. But now I'm over that. I'm better now. <laughs> Reformed. I yeah. recovered. Yeah, 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 I'm healing. I like musicianship again. I think you and I are both in agreement that watching Hate Five Six videos of hardcore shows is better than going to hardcore shows. It better, man, like... Better it, produced. You less You don't sweaty. have to like, put yourself in danger. You don't have to stand in a hot room. Hear the lyrics, mo- mostly. <laughs> um really good uh nobody like tries to get in your face because somebody else pushed you into them and then they think it's intentional like nobody's moshing here because everything's intentional for some reason there's a weird suburban dad in a sweater vest (laughs) yeah there's some like really really young kids there which is awesome because kids should totally be exposed to this music but i'm (laughs) like dude like why are you in the pit please no no. like children no two good uh mosh pit photos i've seen one was with a guy proposing to his girlfriend in the mosh pit with people hardcore dancing around them. And how really long good. before he lost the ring? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. And then the other... This goes, is, it goes down the drain because for some reason there's a drain nearby. And then the other... I, I assume for all the sweat. This is gross, but it's funny. Dude in Australia at a trash talk show pissing into his own mouth. In the pit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Meanwhile, in Australia... That's so... I'm like, how... <laughs> 
How's it, how <laughs> hyped? And why? Like, how hyped do you get to just like, yeah, I'm gonna just like, like you're you're standing up watching this amazing show and you're like, yeah, and then you just immediately lay down, throw your pants off, arc your back up, like get your pelvis up in the air and piss in your own mouth. Just it's like, get the arc right. Like you don't catch yourself doing that and then like roll with it like yeah, it is, it is you like, have to make that happen yeah, it isn't it isn't like flashing your boobs where it just sort of happens You're like oh crap oh i didn't i I, it, I, didn't. I just i just took it just took me for a split second and this happened it's like no that's a commitment that's I'm a, doing that, it now that's a series of steps that you have to like plan out and like then put your plan into action tonight's the night guys tonight i'm gonna I'm piss it. on my own i'm gonna piss <laughs> in my own mouth in the pit oh yeah straight up legend right here <laughs> This guy, this guy pissed in his own mouth. I, re- I really wish I could get that that excited about something to piss in my own mouth over it. Because like I enjoy things, I get excited about things, but I've never been so excited that I was ready to piss in my own mouth while they were happening in front of me. I can like relate to the feeling because like I get hype. But I don't, yeah, but just, like you're always, you're always like, if you're really hyped and you're really, I'm like, like jumping up and you're, down. If you're and like squirming, really energetic about but, something, you're like, just like, Ugh, and you like, you're just, you're just kind of in a weird place because you don't know where to put that energy. Yeah, I just get really fidgety. You don't have an outlet for it. No. This guy just embraced that and just gave himself an outlet <laughs> of pissing into his own mouth. <laughs> Maybe it was like a reality so I think, check. I think we've all had that kind of excitement. We just didn't act on it. We just like let it sit in us and just like kind of enjoyed being excited about the thing. But he was just like, yeah, pissing your own mouth. It's really liberated. <laughs> yeah, just, no, really. just releasing that energy. Let it pa- let it pass through you like lightning, baby. It makes me. He makes Except me feel back bad into your about, mouth. It makes me feel bad about my life. Like, why can't I? Why can't I piss in my own be, mouth? Be that relaxed. <laughs> is it relaxed you know? or is it amped? Because it's, it's. I'm cool. I'm really tense a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You have to be simultaneous. You have to be in that perfect zone where you're both relaxed and totally amped to piss in your own mouth. <laughs> and you also have to like be so relaxed that you don't care that you're pissing in your own mouth <laughs> or anyone else's mouth. If you're ever in a piss in anyone's mouth kind of mood, you're in you're in like a different headspace. Gigi Allen. For those of you who don't know who Gigi Allen is, um, just look it up. Well, we've arrived at the part of the podcast where we're talking about pissing in our own mouths, so maybe it's uh, maybe it's about time to cut it. But we've re- we've really enjoyed having you on, Quiet Nick. I, hey, I really appreciate it, you guys. I really I can see how Joe Rogan could get to duck penis after like three hours. Uh, um, yeah, we got to uh, so, we got to futuristic ant technology and uh, pissing in our own mouths. Yeah, so we definitely bounced around a bit. 2000s yeah, cultural revival. Duck, pe- duck penises <laughs> are pretty- long and corkscrew shaped. By the way, they're fascinating, incredible, see, articulated. See, we, we got there too. There, I, I will throw that in. They're articulated as well. God, incredible, such fascinating um, penises those ducks have. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how mo- how often they piss in their own mouths with them. Oh, I thought we were gonna get away with this one, but we're not getting away we, with anything. We're going down end. for all this. It, it went in at the end. Uh, hey, it's been really great uh, coming on the show, you guys. It's my first time being on a podcast. <laughs> uh, first time discussing. A lot of these things on microphone. <laughs> I almost said it again. <laughs> I turn away from the mic. What to laugh. you? What you mean? Pissing in our own mouths? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, other stuff. You mean the ants? Yeah. No, but we really appreciate you coming. Yeah, I, it's been a while since we've podcasted. I missed doing it. It was one of the things that I was looking forward to doing when I came home. So thanks for being our first guest since I came back. Hey, thank you guys. Yeah. Do you want to uh, plug your SoundCloud? Ooh, ooh, yeah, plug ooh. that shit. Uh, I oh my god! I can put it in the <laughs> description. Like, <laughs> wh- which name did I put for my SoundCloud? Um, Is it quiet? Now? Okay, I might have changed it because I want to keep like fun stuff and like you know serious stuff, like star shit. I'm gonna be a star, by the way. Um, keep like star <sighs> yeah. stuff separate. Um, so uh, it's either SoundCloud.com slash Quiet Nick. Or soundcloud.com slash pure shit. <laughs> one of the one of those. Um just just look at both of them. If you're gonna go on there, I don't know how to mix, so uh just uh do not listen on headphones. You will blow your eardrum. <laughs> um those high frequencies, man. But definitely check it out. I mean it's it's garbage, but you know. Uh, I love Get garbage. Me on SoundCloud. Uh that's Ian, it. Ian and I go dumpster. One diving. man's trash is another man's treasure. Yeah, we go dumpster diving. I really, we love trash. Someone likes it. 
<laughs> somebody's liking my posts. Uh, it's me. A couple of culture vultures and have it's, and it's followed mo- it's me. Mo- it's mostly the ants. The ants are getting really into SoundCloud lately. That's true. You know they don't hear. Maybe they don't hear the high frequencies that I don't know how to mix out yet. Yeah. So they're just they're just experiencing like the best form of the sound. Yeah. They're hearing exactly what they want to hear, and that's yeah. why they like it. I'm, okay, my music's for ants. So if you're, I'm not. a trick. Um, music for ants. It, it's not the best mix, but a, a trick for getting like a decent mix is pink noise. You just pink download noise. this sound file. And you mix each track to like slightly above it and then bring it down. So it kind of like equals out all the frequencies. Huh. Is it like an app or like a um, pink in, noise? In, in, in your um, recording program, there will probably be a pink noise generator. Or you could just look up pink noise on the oh. internet and download it to mix too. So it'd be kind of like a built-in plug-in yeah. type thing? Okay. I'll check that out. Because, I mean, right off the bat, like I can get the volume okay now, but it's just, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, get at me on SoundCloud. Woo! Yay's in the building. SoundCloud, quiet Nick. Yeah, or SoundCloud, pure shit. Check them both out. Yeah, check them both out. Yeah. Check out. Uh, you never know what you'll find. You 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 never know what you'll find. I never know what I'll make. I improvise. Everything's off top. Hip, real hip hop, you know. Off uh, top, real hip hop. Yeah. Real lo-fi hip hop. Yeah. Twenty-four hours study beats. Yeah, dude, <laughs> study. Let me DJ your study session. Uh, let me DJ your. I'll just, fall, uh, I'll just hang out at the library on the opposite side of the table with the little uh, barrier with my with my turntables. Uh, baby showers, uh, bar mitzvahs. Uh, let me let me DJ it up. You know. All right. Thanks again for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. <laughs> yeah, we take we take forever to introduce somebody, and then we take forever to say goodbye to them. <laughs> This has been Oh Well You Bastards. We're back, baby. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. Yeah. That was a good outro. I'll be down at Dino's. I'm going to go piss in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't make it. This is Ian. Right now, I'm putting the finishing touches on a cheap Windows self-titled album. So I wanted to unveil the first song here, probably going to be the single titled Precipice of Sugarloaf. Cherish the mundane 
Let's have a shout out. 